let's go. <clears throat> Are you trying to get out? Welcome. You want to open it? You want it open? No? Okay. I'll leave it just like that, okay? You are not the astronaut. You want to close more? Hey, gang. Welcome. I, I, well, I was trying to... Navy Thunder is here hanging out today. She's in the sound booth. I was trying to make sure she didn't lock herself in there. Because once you shut it, that door's kind of hard to open up. Navy Thunder came to hang out today. Hey, Jen, Mrs. Alice, good to see you, Danny. Hello, Gemma, Terabyte, Unholy Emotes. Hello, good to see you, Kayla. Hi there, Lauren B. You missed last night? That's all right. It's all right. I almost missed last night. Renee, good to see you. Radiant Decay. Elise, hey, hey. Candace with an eye, good to see you there. Lee Photography, Fane, thank you, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Jelly5, good to see you. Ashley, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Navy will be making an appearance here. We'll definitely. Myra, good to see you. Sassy Cassie, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Random, good to see you. What's up? Tegan, words are very hard. They will be very hard today. Guaranteed. Dre or Drea? You have to let me know which one it is. Oh, no, I'm doing well. I'm doing quite well. Quite well. Chuck, pain creates change. Is that your fave? Yeah. We're, I know that words are hard is like, uh, has become... Very, very common for, for people. Lord, did you already not live at your bedtime? There you go. We're doing a little bit earlier today. A little bit. Yeah, I hit record, Angeline. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I did before going live. We do have a goal of 3K bolts to get Candy Thunder up here. She is in the house today. Elise, Tasha, Carol Jaworski, Tony Spark, Fane, Denise Bustard. Tiffany Van Heck, Penny Haas, Amber L. Hickey, Marble City, Mom Meow, Christmas, Christmas Museum Girl, Myra Catalina Fane, Sassy Cassie, thanks so much for the love. Elise Penny, thank you, greatly appreciate it. Douglas in Michigan, to see you there. Uh, Elise, yeah, we're doing heart puffs. Doing heart puffs. Welcome to the Gosh Ekin fam. That is a good one, Denise. Yeah, that is a good one. Nice, Ian. I like it. <laughs> Douglas, Elise, Jelly5, Aunt Sue, Candace, Tiffany Van Heck, Stay at Home Mom, Carol Jaworski, Lauren B, User 596, lots of numbers, Candace, Penny Haas, Elise. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. And yeah, Kelsey, we're, uh, we're going to throw everybody off by going live today. Navy Thunder's right behind me in the sound booth here. <clears throat> hey, kiddo. Hi. She's having fun. She likes the little cons confined space. <laughs> Francis, anything more or the Nick Ar awkward moonwalk? That's a good one, too. Brandigan, it is a special live. This is my birthday celebration live. Birthday was officially Saturday, but today is the official celebration live. It is special. <clears throat> Jen, yeah. Kristen, uh, the Moira convinced you to watch Shit's Creek? Heck yes. Did you enjoy it? I feel like the first episode or two you have to push through to get to the to the gold. We Cree, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Brandon, again, thanks for the birthday wishes. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Candace, Amber L. Hickey, Tiffany Van Heck, Elise Newman, SOS Flint, Penny Haas. Elise, Michelle Waldron, Candace, Tiffany, Douglas, thanks so much. Tupac is here. Heck yeah, thanks for the love. Greatly appreciate it. Girl in Big Sky Country and the Chiefs won. Heck yeah. It's a great it's a great B-Day gift when the uh when the Chiefs win Super Bowls, you know. Aunt Sue, happy late birthday to you. We're a day off. <laughs> Unholy. <laughs> Your name is Elise as well. Jail, you dig the Moira. <laughs> and <laughs> and Kristen Museum Girl, what's your name? It's right there. I try to say everybody's full name. Some people, it's harder than others, obviously. Yo, Julia! 
Football Phantom just had their big season finale. Yup. Yup. I mean, it's still in the nudes, in the new, the news feeds, not nudes feeds. Hi. I felt a door swing behind me. There's Navy Thunder in the sound booth. Crystal, yours was yesterday. Happy late birthday to you as well. And Dredd, so you posted the Wrath of Khan meme in the Chiefs. Oh, when the Chiefs won. <laughs> oh, man. Heck yeah. Oh, we do have a like skull today. We have a like skull of a Millie today. <laughs> Smile wave. Any replacement used for F bombs. Uh, speaking of. I don't know if you guys have seen the Thunder and Spark podcast out yet, but I did something different. Instead of using the bleep for the uh, for the f bombs, I used like some random sound effects. So there's there's like an o and a bunch of other things in there too. There's also like a, a like a rubber chicken sound that I use at some point here, but it's something different each time. It's fun. You you gotta you gotta listen through it and just listen for all of those all of those sensor sound effects. Shannon, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Katisi, thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Candy, yep. Looking for birthday likes. We're going for a Millie. We got a long way to go today. Kimberly says, two of them words are hard and pain creates change. <laughs> Francis, you started using the awkward moonwalk in your daily life. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't like this conversation. What's Nick's other thing? He puts his hood up. Does he put his hood up when he does the awkward moonwalk or are those two separate things? He does them together. Puts the hood up. Recluses. Christian, hey, good to see you there. Kelly Thomas, Nat Vaz. Tony Spark, Macy B. Yen, Diana Galvin, Lady Robin, Kelly Thomas, Silver, Crystal, Crystal Museum Girl, Kimberly P. Bree, Amanda Nicole Newman, Lady Robin, Silver, Macy B. and Mercy with the Heart Pops first gift there, Gina M. W. Alley, uh, Donna TJ, Lauren B., Mama Bear NC, Candace with an I, A, Tupac, heck yeah, thanks so much, Amber L. Hickey, uh, Tiffany Van Heck, Elise Newman, thanks for the love, greatly appreciate it, stay at home, Mom, the effulgent one, Candy Thunder, see you there as well, Candy Thunder. He's just sitting a foot away. Hey, Dater. You want me to turn the you want me to turn the the booth mic on? And just let Navy Thunder just sit in there and talk the whole time. No, ill advised. <clears throat> ill advised. Crystal, uh, Cheryl Blystone, Michelle Walter and Adventures with Pancake, Chiquita Bunny, Stay at Home Mom, The Effulgent One. Thank you so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. We're going to go ahead and get rocking and rolling here. We're almost halfway on the Heart Puff goal right now. I'm rocking some new swag, guys. This is a new piece of swag I wanted to show off to you. We now have a design that just has the Thunder part of the Dusty Thunder logo uh, in the swag shop available. And I experimented, did something different. And I wanted to show you because I dig the hooey out of it. So it is a little bit complicated because when you are on, I don't, I don't even know if you can do it on a mobile. It might just be a desktop thing, but where you go to like change the ink color because it is a vector design. Um, there are actually some options available for different print methods. And I just discovered this whenever I was trying this out to do like tone on tone. This is like a flock velvety print method. So I did black velvety on black and love it it's just very subtle very very subtle and it is soft velvety too so it's fun i'll try not to like rub it that's gonna be weird if i just yeah i'll try not to do that today hey big girl <laughs> you hear her down there going hey mommy hey mommy hey mommy uh, I got Candy Thunder a white sweatshirt that did white on white with the same print method. I got a hat. I did a white t-shirt as well. So we have uh, we have several to show you, but the Thunder design is now out in the swag shop at dusty-thunder.com. Go check it out. Faux show. We are celebrating my birthday today. It was on Saturday, but today is the official celebration live. And when we're going through gift goals and celebration time, we want to hear what your favorite Dusty isms are. First goal, of course, is the 3K Hot puffs to get Candy Thunder and Navy Thunder up here and Happy coming. Birthday. What'd you say? Happy birthday. Thanks, Tater. <laughs> Navy Thunder's understanding of uh, of it being my birthday is that she gets to eat some some dirt cake, too. So she gets very excited. 
Are you going to eat a bite of dirt cake with daddy? Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Coming up, we have stories about family favoritism, disrespectful servers, distant spouses, Valentine's dilemmas, drowned terrariums, hair drama, awkward birthday parties, not mine, cake stories and spicy reward stories, and of course, celebrating my birthday. I just want to clarify that that today is all about me, folks. (laughs) I'm just kidding. It feels really weird to say like, celebrating celebrating my birthday today like to read yeah it just it feels weird to say those kind of things tony spark did you just say when is it not i feel hurt are you trying to break my heart child it's a good thing uh watermelon happy late birthday to you as well cindy yours is thursday heck yes happy birthday um Quick reminder that today is replacing the normal Wednesday stream, so no live tomorrow. Also, VIP is going to be a 30-minute shortened VIP today. Uh, So, But we will still have one where we will be doing this. Wheel of Thunder is going to happen. And in that, we finally got a restock of some of the Piano Man paperbacks that I can do signed copies of as rewards again. And we have updated the stock in the TikTok shop. We have more available for purchase for purchase now. So if you haven't got yours yet, check it out. Um, alternatively, it is available as a paperback ebook and hardcover on Amazon. If you already have yours and you want to send it to me to sign to send back to you, just send a return label with it. And I would be happy to do that. You can find the studio address on the website at dusty thunder.com. That's been an adventure. Also, we have gotten emails from followers about fake Dusty Thunder accounts. This one, Dusty Thunder underscore, is the only Dusty account. We will never direct message you and ask you for money or anything weird like that. So if you're seeing that, please report those accounts to TikTok. There's nothing we can do about it ourselves. We're reporting them as well and trying so uh, your help there with reporting that would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget, we're doing a 24 hour live stream on February 29th because we've lost our minds. There's no other reason. <laughs> There's no other reason to do that except for we've lost our minds. Probably going to be streaming uh, mostly on YouTube, but we'll be live on TikTok for portions of that as well. Reminder to keep chat positive and respectful. Everyone is allowed to have their own opinion and we don't all have to agree, but it costs nothing to be respectful and a DFHP. Also, mods will be ready to boot your ass if you don't comply. So just remember <laughs> this is uh this is a fun space. Uh if you want to be an Ascot and a uh a DFHB reject, you will you'll find out what reject means. So uh also no spoilers, please. Uh Bobby Joe Crossno sending out a a gifted sub to Sandra. Sandra, welcome to the gosh heckin' fam. And we hit the cl- the uh, heart puff. Let's go ahead and talk through that for a moment. Diana 5520, developer girl, prep girl, adventures with Pam, Michelle Heather, Tesh, Michelle Waldron, Lady Stormfly, Callie Prue, Fane, Kimberly P, Elise Newman, Fell Hermit Fairy, there you go, Sue Ann, Tony Spark with the the clutch save because TikTok Live Studio is still jacked up. Shannon. Shannon Humble, Mama Silver, Zool, Tiffany Dawn, Tony Spark, Candy Thunder, Amber Ale, Hickey, Snowman Collector, uh, Pakihi, Gilas, Stay at Home Mom from NM, Mercy the Hufflepuff, Miss Kitty Thomas, Katisi, Jelly 55, Mama Bear, NC, Crystals, M0914, Chiquita Bunny, Effulgent One, uh, Alexandra DeCroix, DeCroix, DeCroix? You're gonna have to help me out with that one. Uh, Garth Lord Fair, Crystal Museum Girl, and uh, Anahi Alvarado. Thank you guys so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. We're going to get the next one set up, and then we're going to get to- our, uh, Candy Thunder and Navy Thunder up here. They're ready. Um, let me get the next one set up. I hear you. Hey, I hear you. Uh, this is going to unlock a Cake Story and Confetti and Dirt Cake. Cake story, confetti, dirt cake. I'm so excited. I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's been like literally hours since I've had dirt cake. I need, I need, it's like my body needs it at this point. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder and Navy Thunder. Hey! 
Don't clap. Okay. I was trying to, I was trying to clap quietly. <laughs> don't, hello. don't scare. Hello. Hey, did you show daddy who's on your shirt? Who is on your shirt? You should. Here. Who is it? <gasps> is it Ariel? It is. Hey, look. Back rub. Back rub. <laughs> Belly rub. No. Are you being so, shy? This one, she only goes to. Oh, that was so loud. Her. Oh, she only goes to school on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So when we moved it, it was. Can you tell Daddy happy birthday? Hey. Look, I changed some stuff up on my shelves. Looky. There's a cloud and a bolt now. Very cool. All your birthday stuff. Is that cool? Hey, can you look right there? Can you say hi? <laughs> she proceeds into her hold the astronaut? Ah, <laughs> uh, kiddo. She'll she'll open up here in a bit. She's uh <laughs> she's a sour patch kid. By uh by VIP live, she will she'll be running the show. Yes, absolutely. She is a sour patch kid though. Uh first she's sour, then she's sweet. Or it's the other way around. It just depends on what's going on. I don't know. She threw her first uh what was it? Terrible threes. What are they called? It's terrible twos, and I, I don't know what they uh -huh. call the threes. It's just shockingly <laughs> terrible threes. It's really bad threes. Yeah, and so it was. Uh, it was like the full singing? on on the ground fit. Are you singing? All right. I'm I talking. think I think you know she went through she went through a bout of sickness too. Can you give me a hug? No. Mommy. Can you give me a hug? Mwah. Hey, say bye bye. Thank you for coming up here. <laughs> tyrannical tantrum threes. threes tyrannical threes that's, that's pretty good that's pretty accurate yes that's pretty good i love you she's uh she uh is picked out her own shirt hey. she's making decisions now so three major oh yes. is he talking to the microphone the astronaut's talking to the microphone what's he saying no 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 are you singing she's scared she's scared. Right. bye guys shy girl say happy Sorry. birthday debbie happy birthday daddy are you going to try some dirt cake with me in a minute? Yeah, you'll open up when it's dirt cake time. Watch. Dirt cake affects this kid. Like, I mean, sugar in general affects this kid like instantly. It is wild. She's like Bane. She's like pushes the button and goes straight into her bloodstream. She's like, you think you know the darkness. You merely adopted it. And the fornado, I like it. Followed up by the fornado. That, yeah, that that absolutely makes sense. Uh, she, she yesterday, I posted this on Insta, but we got out in the snow. It actually snowed a little bit here, and we got out, uh, put the full snow get up on, and got out and played. Uh, which I knew this was going to happen. I knew she was going to have a great time when we were out there. But when it, when it was time to stop playing, I knew it was going to be a meltdown. No pun intended. But it, it absolutely was a meltdown. I was like, okay, we got to go. We got to go go change and get ready to go get sissy and she's like Aah! i'm like yeah that's uh that's about right so uh I, anytime we do something fun we just have to do it with the understanding and the grain of salt that it's going to be bad whenever it has to end but that's that's just the way it goes 174 750 on the what is this flower bouquet it is a bouquet flower bouquet that's where we're at on that right now. And that is for cake story confetti and dirt cake so please let me have dirt cake it is so good. Oh, it is so good. self so aware Mama Bear, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Tony Spark, Becky Morlock, Lauren B, Silver Sun, Candace with an IA, Amberell Hickey, Janine, Danny, Candace, Vanessa Rivera, Olivia Marie, Developer Girl, Aunt Sue, Elise, Tara, Cheeky. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. We're going to dive into our very first story. You better get out your brooms because it's about to get dusty. Are we going to leave this on the document so I say it every time? <laughs> it's not a good it is a good it is a good catchphrase way to go Caden Thunder who who isn't here today but but props to Caden Thunder for that all right here we go first story of the day comes from the AITA subreddit and is titled am I the astronaut for treating my two sets of nephews differently because of their parents I took the older son to his sport every week for more than a year when it was supposed to be only the first few weeks with the new baby. I once baked the birthday cake for his oldest third for his oldest third birthday. And since then, it is expected that I do this every year. Intricate cakes, for example, looking like a Ninjago. 
He expects me to be able to babysit very last minute. I do really love my nephews and want them to have everything, so I go along with a lot of it. I never get a thank you. Never get informed about special circumstances beforehand, like the kid hurt his leg and can't do anything too active, small stuff like that. Because I felt that my brother treated me like a babysitter that he didn't even pay and he wasn't even nice to, I started doing less and less with the kids. My sister and I have a strong relationship, even though she lives a two-hour drive away. I also love her sons and enjoy spending time with them. I don't know if it makes any difference, but my sister's youngest is also my godson. When I spend time with them, she informs me beforehand about those speckle. Speckle? Words are going to be hard. Words are hard. All the time. She informs me beforehand about those special circumstances, which makes my time with the kids so much easier. <laughs> That's very loud. <laughs> like, I'm trying really hard to concentrate and read, but it's like <laughs> kid show sound effects in the background. Um, when when I spend time with them, she informs me beforehand about those special circumstances, which makes my time with the kids so much easier. She thanked me at the end of the day and gave me the diapers I needed when the kids were smaller, normal stuff I would usually expect from everyone whose kids I would take care of. She lives a bit too far away to visit after work, so sometimes I send letters to her kids with pictures, short stories, short stories, etc. Also, ASMR Diet Coke cracking time over there. You heard it. She's, she's got... Candy Thunder's got her crack brewing now, too. My sister recently had to quarantine with both kids for two weeks, so I sent letters more frequently, and we FaceTimed a lot as well when they weren't allowed to leave the house. Now my mother and my brother are hounding me that I clearly prefer my sister's sons over my brother's and that when I spent more time with them, in person or otherwise, I am obligated to do the same for the other two. This is not limited to the extra time I spent on my sister and her kids during quarantine, but it kind of started the discussion. In all honesty, I noticed that I do tend to shy away a bit more from spending time with my brother's kids. This is mostly about him, though, and how he tends to treat me. Also, I work full time and only have a limited amount of time to spend on my nephews. For me, it makes sense to spend this time on whoever makes me happy and doesn't stress me out, which more often than not means my sister and her kids over my brother and his kids. Am I the astronaut for not spending equal amounts of time and effort on both sets of nephews? Ah, uh, yeah, Christian Museum Girl, I agree with you here. There's no obligation. There is no obligation. It is it is an NTA. I'd like to dig into it a little bit more, though, because um, it, it is a it's a bullshit request. It's a bullshit request from the son, right? Uh, or brother. From OP's brother. So OP has a brother with kids and a sister with kids. Uh, the brother doesn't communicate well. Or the brother's family doesn't communicate well, doesn't keep things in stock, is always last minute, just uh, abuses the babysitting privileges, basically. Sister does not. Which creates a much more positive experience. So if they want to bitch about you being compelled to spend more time and energy on your sister and her kids, they should feel compelled to figure out why that is. And instead of just bitching about it, find some kind of solution. It wasn't a, Hey, why? Right. It was a, you should be your shitty for just for doing it. I don't think there was, it doesn't sound like there was any delve into trying to understand the motivators behind it. They just wanted to bitch about them not getting something that someone else got. Well, if they put the same amount of effort forth and care and consideration that she does for the limited amount of time that you watch her kids, you would be excited. It wouldn't be a negative experience. And that, that's what it comes down to because of how your brother treats you in this space. You have now related watching those kids as a negative experience because it is a negative experience, not because of the kids, because of him, because of their parents. The inverse here is the sister and you relate this to a positive experience because it is a positive experience because there's no bullshit. There's no shitty last minute communication. There's no, there's no treating you like garbage. It is all positives. Of course you are drawn to something that makes you happy rather than drawn to something that stresses you the F out. Of course you have no obligation to treat anybody equally. None. And if, if anything here, I would stress this to your brother and say, do you know why? 
Do you know why I choose to spend more time and energy and focus here? Do you know why? And see what happens. Explain the root cause. See if that does anything. Truly me, Izzy, I understand. The the brother's kids didn't do anything wrong. However, I, I, I mean, unfortunately, you, you cannot separate that, right? You cannot separate them from their parents. And the whole experience becomes a negative. And I'm sure, I'm sure this isn't isolated to just OP here. I'm sure this has to do with, with a lot of things for those kids because of how their parents are. And that's just, you can't escape your parents. At least when you're, when you're a minor, when you're a dependent, right? You can't. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people in their life think this about their parents. There's nothing they can do about that. And yeah, I understand they didn't do anything wrong, but Brother can't be bitching about OP wanting to do something that makes her happy versus wanting to stress herself out. That's it. It is unfortunate. It is definitely unfortunate, but it's there's no obligation. The am I the ass cannot for treating my two sets of nephews differently because of their parents. The two sets of parents treat you differently, OP. Do they have an obligation to treat you exactly the same? And maybe that's the way to put it. If I have an obligation to do the same. With the nephews, you have an obligation to treat me the same as as our sister does. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Oh, Grumble says, I bet your brother shit talks OP to his kids, too. Probably. Probably. Sky blue. Hold up. We're birthday twins. You're 41 today. I'm 42. Am I? Yeah, I turned 42 on Saturday. Today's the birthday live. My official birthday was Saturday, but of course, there's all kinds of stuff going on over the weekend. I I am 42, right? Thumbs up. (laughs) Candy Thunder sent me a video of this this elderly couple being interviewed for something, and he was like, the, the dude was 98 years old, but he had to ask his wife how old he was. Uh, and it was 98, right? I'm like, this is 100% us in the future. This is 100% us. It doesn't matter how old we get. I'm always going to have to ask her. ADD, I'm not going to the parade. Well, we're actually heading out to uh, heading out to Tennessee to do some some Smoky Mountain time tomorrow. I yeah, I think in. <sighs> In this story, it is entirely possible that that OP shit talks are that brother o, shit talks OP to the kids. Um, and yeah, the kids, the kids are innocent here. They didn't do anything wrong. But unfortunately, there is no way to separate that. Break away. You're in you're in uh, Nashville. Smoky Mountain time. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. We love it down there. We're unplugging for a minute. We need it. We definitely need it. Uh, Tess, cyanide, pixie sticks, late nights with Lisa, poetic rose, Tony Spark, late nights with Lisa again, poetic rose again, Nikki Bernal, a flower, Amber L. Hickey, death skull, Candace with an eye, a Samantha Girus, a flower candy, thunder. We are at 390 to 750 on the flower bouquets right now to get a cake story, cake and confetti. Shaz, Piotr, candy thunder again, Jill, Torina, Tony Spark, Olivia Marie. Lost Soul 3166. Thanks for the love. They're greatly appreciated. Nikki Bernal says, I actually have a brother that does this, and I have had to cut him and his wife out of my life. This is what it's headed to. This is what it's headed to. And 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 then for them to victimize themselves for some for a situation they created and come back and be like, Oh, it's really unfair how you uh how you choose to spend more time, you know, and and energy with these kids than our kids. It's a loser's mentality. Loser's mentality. Local goat uh, in Seaverville. Haven't have, we haven't been to local? What is local goat? We're gonna have a little more time than we thought because some of the stuff got canceled. So. Nikki, they actually got mad at you for spending time with your own kids rather than theirs. That's cool. Samantha, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. It's a farm to table restaurant. Huh? Okay. Local goat candy thunder in Seaverville um, is a, a high recommendation for us. 
All right, we're going to go ahead and bounce to our next story here. This one is a followers admitted story, and it is titled, Am I the Astronaut? I was straight disrespected at Rib Crib. Let me explain the situation. My girlfriend and I were hungry, starving. We did the classic back and forth dance. What do you want for dinner? No idea. What do you want? No idea. We finally settled on Rib Crib. Yeah, man, a nice barbecue burger, some wings, some fries. That's the stuff. The sound of some good food was music to our ears. So we went online, placed our order for curbside pickup, and headed to the restaurant. When we arrived, the parking lot was mostly empty. Good, I thought. Quick pickup, right? My girlfriend called the restaurant number for curbside. We waited five minutes. Nothing. Finally, someone picked up. Hello, they stated. Hi, uh, I have a curbside pickup under so-and-so. We're outside in spot one. She politely responded. The worker scoffed and exclaimed that they were still working on our food. It was already five minutes after the pickup time, and there were like three cars in the parking lot, but I digress. We politely said okay, and that we'd be in the curbside spot. Another ten minutes passed. Nothing. So my girlfriend urged me, the cavalry, to go inside and grab our food. So that's what I did. I went inside and waited at the pickup booth. Nobody was there. There were a few employees texting and laughing in the aisle, and the kitchen seemed pretty tame. There was one table that had an elderly couple, but that was literally the only customers I saw inside. I I decided to move to the front check-in area, thinking maybe they hadn't seen me. Still ignored. I could clearly see all of the employees loitering, doing nothing, on their phones, etc. Now, I'm not the one to be a Karen, but my inner Karen was boiling up. Release the Karen! Excuse me? I spoke up loudly. A woman cocked her head and looked at me, hobbling over unhappily to the front host stand. What do you need? She asked. I scoffed. I have a curbside pickup. We called about 20 minutes ago and I was told the food would be out shortly, shortly, and we've heard nothing since then. She looked at me unhappily. Name? She asked. I responded and she walked back into the kitchen. Another five minutes pass and she brings out our food in a bag while texting. She barely even holds her arm up to give me the food, not breaking from her text for a second. I was seeing red. Could you please hand it to me? I asked. She looked up angrily and raised her arm before dropping our food. Purposefully, I know it. She smiled and said, oh no, I'm sorry, and continued to just stare at me. I picked up our food and examined it. The the boxes had taken minimal damage, and at this point, I was at the mercy of my hungry girlfriend if I didn't get the food back to her. The employee had already retreated back to the kitchen, so I just left the hangry fires of my stomach roaring with rage. I explained the situation to my girlfriend, and she was livid. So we ate our food, which was a bit cold but still decent, thankfully, and then called the store, asking to speak to the manager. You'll never guess who answered. The same woman. My girlfriend tore into her, explaining how we wanted our money back. Silence. Then the phone call disconnects. Unbelievable. The next afternoon, I went in to speak directly with her or a different manager. As it turns out, she is absolutely not a manager. But the actual manager, a kind old gentleman, had stepped out for the night and left a shift lead in charge, who was also not her. But she decided to take the phone call, and the shift lead who was in charge let her. I told the manager how upset I was at my experience, and he was bewildered. He didn't know. I don't know what happened next, but I got my money back, and I know that I never saw her there again. I think I got her fired. Good riddance. Do you think I'm the crab ass for this? Too long don't read. I was straight disrespected at at Rib Crib, but I got revenge. I think. Man. 495 at 750 on flower bouquets. We got got to get there. We got to get there. There's dirt cake like within my reach here, folks. Once, once Navy Thunder puts eyes on that dirt cake, it's game over. It's game over. Yeah, this is an NTA. This is 100% an NTA. The question is, we've got to go back and make sure we're answering the direct question. Am I the astronaut? I was straight disrespected at Rip Crib. Crib. Well, I mean, it's in this situation. No, you were you were not the astronaut at all. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like the benchmark or the baseline for customer service is is going lower and lower and lower over time. And I know I sound like a grumpy old man uh, and maybe at 42, I'm just a little bit grumpier now, but it definitely seems like the standard is just looser and lower and lower and lower and lower. Um, When, when we come across like a really stellar server, we make sure to let them know that like, Hey, um, you were great. 
and don't let this shit world of customer service and what's happening all around you discourage you because you were really great at what you do. And the experience that you get while doing this is going to take you so much further. It's going to be fantastic for people who really dive in and give a shit and are good and care. This is the part that I don't get. I don't get it. And we saw it when we worked at Outback Steakhouse, Candy Thunder. It is the the mentality of I'm here. I'm at work. My my income is dictated by the amount of effort I put in, right? The better job I do at waiting tables, the better service I give people, the better money I make most of the time. doesn't always work like that. Sometimes you're not going to be able to make a difference and that's fine. It happens. But there were so there's so many people even then that would show up and be like, you know, I just don't really want to be here. Do you want my tables? And I'm like, hell yeah, I want your tables. I'll run this whole damn restaurant. The more tables, the more money. I was there to work. I was there for a job. So people, it's not just restaurants, it's anything. But but I think restaurants are are one of the areas where if it's slow, like things get tough. There's an idle hands problem. And a lot of people start getting into this, 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 lackadaisical mentality and then they just don't want to do anything and then they start showing up to work but they don't want to do anything i'm like why are you here why are you here because it's cush but as a server you only get like two bucks an hour like you need tips to survive you have to be good you have to try i don't understand i do not understand also i don't understand how if this gal who did this shit if this happened to her i'm sure she would have thrown a shit fit She would have absolutely not been okay with it. She would have been terrible and very upset about it, but is 100% okay doing that to other people. Also, it being completely dead in there and and what, a dozen people walking by and just paying no attention? Not okay. It's not okay. It's a lack of leadership. And I say that because typically when you have um, an organization like this, you have a restaurant, you have a lot of servers, that's a lot of young, malleable people. If you have a lazy leader or a lazy boss, everyone else is going to follow suit. If you have somebody who is an actual leader that can inspire them, make them better people, they are going to do a good job. This is a lack of leadership. And obviously, the the actual manager had to step out um, and learned his lesson there. Learned his lesson trying to let somebody else take charge because it just ran it into the ground. And now he's probably going to answer to corporate. I don't know. Is that a chain or is it a franchise? I'm not sure. But uh, it's... It's NTA, and I'm, unfortunately, this kind of crap happens more and more often, and I don't know, I don't know why. Hey, Navy Thunder, are you excited? She's like, I get my dirt cake, I get my, I get my dirt cake. Hey, Nightingale, Candace A, Carla Vanderbilt, John, Honey Bear, Kelsa, Miss Pamela L, Donna DJ, I saw up here, I've got to thank real quick, Carla Vanderbilt with the first gift of the roses there, uh, Angel sent some gifted subs out to Don, Celine, Firenthal, Jeanette, and Michelle Waldron, welcome to the Gosh Heck and Fam to all of you, and let's give some thanks for the, the flower bouquets here, heck yes. Cali Peru leading the board. Cheeky Flamingo in the number two spot. Sarcastic photographer. Suan 257. Developer Girl. Flower Girl. Candy Thunder. Fame. Fellow Hermit Fairy. Pirate Puffs. That was aggressive. <laughs> Amber L. Hickey. Tesh. Golden House Supply Go. Good to see you, man. I'm Michelle Heather. Adventures with Pam. Hey, it's confetti. She calls it glitter. It's confetti. Heck yeah. Uh, and <sighs> Adventures with Pam, Tony Spark, Gry Goose, Prep Girl, uh, Nicholas Philpott, MJ Newcomb, Elise Newman, Magical Theory, I am Jill21, Poetica Rose, Mags Amazing, LMD10, Hoorn 2010, Death Scowl, Crystal Stockman, Kimberly P, Mama Silver, Katisi Piotr, uh, Mandy Flores, Jelly55, Tara John. K Crush, Nikki Bernal, Pixie Dust, uh, Adele McFadden, Joyful Stranger, Donna, Effulgent One, Justina, and Shannon Humble. Thank you so much, guys. Greatly appreciate that. Let me get the next one set up here real quick, or do you want me to wait? Oh, let me get the next one set up. Now, oh, Navy Thunder's excited now. <sighs> She's very excited now. Okay, hold up. Next one is going to be a spicy reward story and candy feedback. And, oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. How many of these? (laughs) You 
hear her. She just goes, it's daddy's birthday, Tony. The way she says Tony is hilarious. Spicy reward story and candy. Feedback. We have taters in love. We're going for 2K taters in love. Rock and roll. All right, here we go. We're ready. Happy birthday to you. I can't sing to myself. Happy That's just be weird. Happy birthday to you. <gasps> Happy birthday, dear Tosky. Happy birthday to you. Ready? <gasps> Yay! 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 Oh, dirt cake. Look at this, folks. This this is like it's it's all mixed up dirt cake. But this this is dirt cake. Is or can you explain what dirt cake is to them? Uh, yep. Dirt cake. <laughs> There you go. Oh yeah. Uh so mm. <laughs> it's um what is it? It's cream cheese, a block of cream cheese, a stick of butter, um half a cup of powdered sugar. Um and then you make two packages of vanilla pudding and you do 3 cups of milk instead of 4, so one less cup than what it calls for. Mm -hmm. And then you and then you mix them all together. Mm -hmm. Um, and then fold in, fold in the cream, fold in whipped cream, <laughs> like Cool Whip. Fold in the cream cheese. No, fold in, fold in Cool Whip. There you go. And then layer with Oreos. And that's mm. it. It's super simple. It's a uh, fat-free, sugar-free, right? <laughs> yeah, it's completely sugar-free. Very sugar -free. healthy. What you eat? Very healthy. No, thank you. You don't want any? I had some when I played, when I made it You're up. wrecking my heart. <laughs> I just had a mint, so. Yeah, you say happy birthday, Daniel. So good. It is so, it's so like, it's so rich. Um. <laughs> Francis, how do you <laughs> fold it in? <laughs> Quit saying fold it in. Daddy, say fold it in one more time. Do you want, do I want to come with you? I got to stay over here. You can give him a hug. Yay, there we are. Hi, can you wave? Wave at the camera. There you go. Good job. Do you like dirt cake? Uh -huh. You do? Nope, better keep that down. You better keep that belly covered up. Hey, can you say hi into the microphone? Huh? No? Can you sing? What's your favorite song right now? Is it the Wish song? The Disney Wish song? Are you going to be a singer? All right, give me a kiss. I'll give you a kiss. There. Yeah, we, we don't do uh, the... Chocolate dirt cake. We only do vanilla. Yeah, we've only done it with uh, with vanilla. Well, Ryan made it one time with chocolate. Yeah, it's just it was different. Rich, like, uh, chocolate. Yeah, it was more rich for sure. Also, they have what are they cosmic Oreos right now, uh, which are really cool. They're they're almost Dusty Thunder themed, but they have like a little pop rock candy inside, so they've got a little pop to them. It's very cool. And they're pink and blue. Yeah, yeah, it's a color scheme and everything. It's like they're Dusty Thunder Oreos. It's amazing. Rockets uh, and. Rockets, robots. They might have had like an alien on there too. It's very cool. Yeah, very, very, very cool. If you, what if you just Google dirt cake, it's the the recipes are pretty sure common out there. Okay, too. Candy Thunder is going to share the recipe in the VIP group. There's, there's tons of recipes online. This was just my, my, what my mom used in tweaks. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is Grandma Peggy's recipe. Tweaks. All right, here we go. Thank you so much for the beat day wishes. Greatly appreciated. We're already on our way with the uh, tatered in love goal here. Candace Tina, Vagina, uh, Mrs. Pamela L, Embriel Hickey, Tony Spark, Catherine Rose Ponter, Jill. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, M, Crystal Rena, Rachel McClung, Douglas Holcomb, Janine Benham. Thank you so much. Kimberly P, Jen, Carol Jaworski, Fel Hermit Fairy, Silver, Catherine Rose. Greatly appreciate the love. Thank you all so much. All right. We're going to dive over to our next story here. After I get some some water, It'd be hard to eat dirt cake and read. That would be tough. I'm tempted to try it though. I am tempted, Mama Bear. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. You're screaming it. You may you may alarm people around you. All right, here we go. This one is actually from the marriage subreddit and is titled "My wife is cold and distant towards me since I helped an ex during a bad time." Oof. I, male 35, was in a long-term relationship with a woman, female 33, between the ages between the ages I was 20 to 30. Then she left for a job in another state. Later, she told me LDR didn't work 
long distance relationship. So we broke up and I discovered that she was engaged. I met my wife a year later, and honestly, I don't think I ever knew what love was before I met her. Everything is different with her, and love is so easy, and not an uphill battle all the time like I realized my former relationship was. I'm trying not to bash my ex or relationship. We grew up together. <clears throat> we grew up together, and we learned a lot, but sometimes you hate something, and that turns out to be a good thing, and this, for me, was the ending of my relationship. <clears throat> I was very sad and devastated, but looking back, I'm happy it happened, or I wouldn't have known what true love or happiness is. At the same time I met my ex-wife, my ex moved back, and she said that she regretted ending things and that we loved each other. I wasn't in love with her anymore, and I turned her down. She's still a good friend, and I like her as a friend. She is, however, my sister's best friend. This is going to get complicated. My wife knows her, and she's never been threatened by her because we have always had a solid relationship. Well, that's good. My ex's mom unfortunately passed away suddenly and she has been inconsolable and broken since and I cannot since I cannot even imagine the pain. My sister is devastated too and she has been by her side. I have been supportive and it felt very appropriate. My sister encouraged me to be there and help support my friend. Our friend. Sorry. My sister encouraged me to be there and support our friend. My wife didn't mind in the beginning, but I felt that she started being uncomfortable that I went on walks and hikes with my ex. But it was doing her good to keep her mind off of things, and I found my wife's coldness uncalled for. I never experienced her as cold-hearted or callous, but here we are. She just didn't like the mention of my ex, so I didn't mention her either. I'm a little confused. Maybe there will be more clarification here. Then a week after New Year's, my sister planned a trip... Words are hard, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Then a week after New Year's, my sister planned a week's vacation for her and her husband, my ex, me, and another couple that my sister and ex are friends with. <laughs> Ooh. But not your wife? Eek. My wife this time was very upset and said that she didn't want me to go. She asked why she wasn't invited then if it was just an innocent hangout. My sister said that this was ridiculous because we've been friends since high school, but my wife said that my sister never really liked her. I thought she was being unfair and ridiculous. However, she said that she didn't want me to be on that trip. After the trip, my wife has been different. He still went. He still, he still went. He still went on the trip. I can't imagine why she's been different, dude. Uh, also, we're going to go ahead and do this right now. Jabroni. She isn't rude or upset or sad, but she just doesn't engage with me. Oh, shite. She's too indifferent. She doesn't start conversations. When I try to confront her, she doesn't engage in arguments. I don't know what to do. She doesn't even think that something has changed. Oh, yes, she does. She's indifferent. It's too late. When I am going out, she doesn't even care. If I go on a hike with my ex, she doesn't get bothered. Also, when my sister had her birthday, my wife told me that morning that she was feeling sick and didn't want to risk infecting the others, and she just sent a text to my sister and a present with me. Now, onto what ended up being the last straw. My ex is having a birthday party on Friday. Both me and my wife are invited. My wife just said, sorry, I can't do it. I'm already booked for a work friend's birthday. I asked her why I wasn't invited, and she said that I was... But she was taking her nephew, so I didn't need to go with her so I could go to my party instead. This is very out of character for my wife, who would have tried to make other solutions like dropping by one party first and then the other, but she just didn't care. I asked her if she came. I asked her if she could come with me instead since her work colleague isn't a close friend, but she just dismissed me and laughed mirthfully, calling me ridiculous. Never heard the word mirthfully, but I'm hanging on to it. She's done. Yeah, she's dude. She's done. She's indifferent. She doesn't even. Candy Thunder, what are the stages? Frustration, resentment, indifference. It's too far gone, Brozo. She doesn't even resent you anymore. She just doesn't care. At this point, I, I would not be surprised at all because she's at this point. She's she's done. It is a matter of time. She may be talking to an attorney already. And the fact that you went ahead and went on this trip. <sighs> speaks volumes. Volumes. OK, let's let's reflect here for a second. The instant I understand why you were doing what you're doing, but the instant that your partner 
throws a flag and says, I am not comfortable with this. You take that seriously. And you at least try to find a solution. You do not ignore it and go ahead and proceed anyway. Your wife was comfortable. She didn't have a problem with it before. She said she didn't have a problem with it before because you guys have a solid relationship. Well, you spent more and more and more time with your ex who professed her love to you. And at some point, there's attrition, right? At some point, the shields that your wife has gets get worn down you keep choosing to spend time with this woman who professed her love to you and yes she's going through a tough time but also she's probably 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 not upset to be also able to spend time with you and now what there's a freaking couples trip that your sister arranged and you and your ex are the couple your wife was excluded she threw a flag she said don't do it you did it anyway it's done it's over I know there isn't, uh, this isn't an AITA story. You're not asking if you're the astronaut for this, but you are. You definitely are. 1500 to go on our Tater and Love goal here as well. She's done. She's done. You, oh, I, I, it's at least a two here. You're at least a two because you definitely shouldn't have done this. But the fact that, that your partner brought up this discomfort and you just completely ignored it to me, puts you at a one. What the hell? You threw your relationship away. And now to get back and be like, Hannah, she's so being so cold. I don't understand. I don't understand why, why she's being so, so different and cold because she told you not to go on this couple's trip with your ex and you did it anyway. You jabroni. You're smarter than this. This is denial. He's in denial. She's indifferent. She is done. And it's your fault. Good job. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sister. Sister. Sister is definitely there as well. Um, I mean, setting up this trip and getting pissed off at the wife about it. She knew what was going on here, too. Sister is just is right there, too. Uh, Jimmy ESH is everyone sucks here. I don't think the wife sucks here. Everybody who went on the trip, so sister, uh, OP, and the ex, yes. Completely taking advantage of the situation here. Completely manipulating. This was from the the marriage AITA, or the marriage subreddit as well, and the, the, to- the, ti- the total. The title was, my wife is cold and distant towards me since I helped an ex during a bad time. Daphne says he's not in denial. He doesn't have the courage to end the marriage and is sitting back waiting for it. Okay, so he. So this this narrative that he's written is just a farce. Do you think that could be Candy Thunder? You think you think he he's not in denial? He's just he's doing all of this too cowardly in his marriage and is just sitting back waiting for her to do it. So he's not the one who does it. And this narrative that he's written is just a farce. It is just him. Like he knows it's not true. Is that possible? It's all possible, but he does. Yeah, I mean, it sounds that, that, that <laughs> might might take more brain cells than he has. Yeah, if we take this at face value, it is possible, though. Everything is possible here. Uh, Candace with an eye, Brownla 85, Lisa, Liz, Candace again there, Gry Goose, Gina Duran. Cheeky Overkill Mill, Tracy Walker, Faye, Knockout Design Shop, Elizabeth, Overkill Milligan, Jack Key, Candy Thunder, Stephanie Woodard, Tanya D, Mary with the Paper Cranes there, Branla, Doodles Dragon, heck yeah, welcome to the gosh heckin' fam. Lauren B, the Effulgent One, Mary, Heidi J, Catherine Rose, Branla, welcome to the gosh heckin' fam as well, Mary, Harley Bitch, Catherine Rose, Lauren B, we got a galaxy incoming here from Cheeky, heck yes, thank you so much for that, greatly appreciate it. Uh, Life on the Fritzes says, tell his wife that he's having an affair without telling his wife he's having an affair. Dude, I just don't understand it. All three of them are sabotaging the marriage cosmos. Uh Uh-huh. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. My wife is cold and distant towards me since I helped an ex during a bad time. Yeah, Sophie, not being threatened doesn't equal allowing you to prioritize your ex against your partner's wishes. Like she was cool about it at first, and then when it got uncomfortable, she said, this is uncomfortable. And he's like, oh, you're fine. I'm going anyway. 
come what may. Are you punching in on the mic? Is that what's happening? So there's some comments here. He doesn't have an update or anything, but he has a few comments and he's not really. He said he was smarter than this earlier, and I really don't think he is. So mm. a lot of it is just like, I just don't really know what I did. Like, I'll, he says, I'll cut my ex off entirely if that's what my wife wants and speak to my late. sister about the whole vacation. It's too what late. our intentions are, but you never should have gone on the vacation, dummy. dude. Uh, hold on. Where does it, it wasn't a couple's vacation. We all knew each other since late teens. Of course, we didn't share rooms. I'm not interested in my ex. I see her more. As it a was friend. two couples and OP and his ex. It was a couple's trip, bro. And yeah, your wife told you not to go and you went anyway. That's it. There you go, Jen. It's too late to apologize. It's too late to apologize. It's too late. That's it. Oof. It's too late. She's indifferent. Once you hit that point of indifference, I don't think there's any coming back. I don't. Candy Thunder, do you think there's any coming back from indifference? That's that's the point of no return, right? Nothing for this guy, she says. Pack a bag, Homer. Uh. <laughs> she said he needs to walk down the street with one of those stick bags. That's how far gone. <laughs> the polka dot handkerchief like yeah, yeah okay uh wow what are a satchel no what is, what is it called uh the the stick the the stick with the handkerchief like uh the bag at the end <laughs> lady flossy says hobo i mean it's a yeah but but specifically the stick with the with the handkerchief cargo thing at the end <clears throat> A bindle, okay. A bindle, a hobo bag, a hobo satchel, a bindle, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear that. Was it mirthful? Is that what it was? Mirthfully, in a way that's full of laughter or happiness. Okay, now we know. Mirthfully, learned a new word today. That's mirthfully. Also, uh. I feel I feel like that's uh, that's something that that she that Moira would say here. Confabulate. Uh, did we do confabulate l last time? We might have. Let me switch that up. We got to get a different one here. Danger some. Thrip it. Here we go. Ready? Thrip it. Brit slang. A pretty frivolous young woman. Don't start with me, you little thrip it. You don't have the media training. Those are fun. Fell Hermit Fairy, you got it. You got to watch. You got to watch Shit's Creek. You got to do it. All right, we're going to bounce to the next one. We're over the halfway point on the Tater in Love right now. 1080 of 2K. Let's rock and roll. Mirthfully, yeah, it's got to be a, a Moira Rose. A Moira Rose. Moira Rose. I have to do the cake story. Okay, thank you for the save there. Appreciate it. Cake story number one, right? Here we go. Reward time. Cake story time. This one is a... Follower submitted. Cake story. Heck yeah. OP, if you're in the house and you want to claim your story, you know what to do. This one is titled, Everyone Sucks Here When It Comes to the Gourmet Cupcakes. So a little backstory. My aunt works for the housing authority in my hometown, and the main housing unit has a venue that can be used by residents and employees. Dates are first come, first serve. We usually celebrate the holidays or birthdays the weekend after the actual event, so we have never lost a date. The venue does have a kitchen, and you can use the kitchen in the venue with rules, clean up after yourself, and you can only use it the day of the event. The event needs to end at 9 p.m. with clean up after. These rules make it easier. OP, hey oh, hey oh. Nice. Candace with an I. Heck yeah. Uh, Fell Hermit Fairy, the show is called Shits Creek. S-C-H-I-T-T -T apostrophe S Creek. Those rules make it easier for two events after after the other, and you're not interfering in each other's events. So we were celebrating my so we were words are hard. So we were celebrating my grandmother's 60th birthday on a Saturday with a potluck and and all the over the hill decorations. My cousin even had a walker made from balloons. Well, when using the refrigerator, one of my relatives found golden black cupcakes in the fridge. It fit the theme colors. They were pretty elaborately decorated and filled with the sweet cream filling. Well, they put them out as well as the deviled eggs, 
potato salad, and pasta salad. The party was a success. My aunt called my mom to let us know the cupcakes were not from my family members, but that they belonged to the person who booked the venue for the Sunday. She had put them in the fridge for Sunday after she had unlocked the venue on Saturday. So we ate about $400 worth of gourmet cupcakes that weren't ours. My aunt told the tenant that it was their fault and why the contract says they can only use the venue the day of. The tenant understood and my aunt did offer to pay them back, but the damage was done. So that is why the family where everyone sucks here. What do you think, Dusty? I, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Dr. Sweets. Thank you for the happy birthday, which is window cast. Appreciate that as well. Uh, this, uh, f- how many cupcakes was $400 worth? Candace, like how, how many? Ooh. I got to know. I got to know how many cupcakes this is. Sixty. Oh, sixty. Those are some expensive cupcakes. I mean, that's a lot of them, too. Uh, I mean, it was an honest mistake. There wasn't any kind of malice behind any of this. Nobody was doing it on purpose. The person who left them there, the tenant that left them there, knew they weren't supposed to use it ahead of time, could have put a note or something on it and been like, for this event this day, right? And that would have that would have solved all the problems here. And and I understand, you know, uh, even though... Even though your aunt said that uh, was willing to pay it back, there's no way that they could get the cupcakes in time for their party. So that sucks. It is their fault. It is 100% their fault for for putting them in there before they were supposed to put them in there when they knew they weren't supposed to without any kind of label or sign or anything like that. If there was a sign or a note on these, nobody would have touched them. And I guess maybe that's the moral of the story. If you're going to break protocol... Make sure there are some clear signs to other people who are following protocol so that they know that you've broken protocol. It just happened. It was a, it was just a, the stars aligned, like it fit your theme for your party. It it just, it, it, it's unfortunate. That's it. It is unfortunate. I don't think anyone sucks here. NS, NSH. No one sucks here. It's just unfortunate. Shit happens. Uh, and this is one of those shitty things. They could have prevented it by putting a sign on it, but it doesn't sound like they were shitty about it. They were understanding. So at least there's that. Um, 400 bucks in cupcakes. I mean, if if I had $400 worth of cupcakes disappear, I'd probably be pretty pissed at myself because it would have been my fault. And that's it. But at least they weren't mad. Nobody was shitty about it. And I think that that leads to an NSH instead of an ESH. No one sucks here. It sucks. Shitty situation. Yeah, if it's $400 worth of cupcakes, you think you'd be a little more careful and more likely to put some kind of sign on stuff there, right? Savage, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Big bravo. Thank you. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Faye, Sveja, Samantha, Anise Moon, Overkill Mill, Janice2014, Shan, Dr. Sweets, Becky Shell, Roxanne Condon. Welcome to the Goshek and Fam. Fell Hermit Fairy, Dr. Sweets, Diana Galvin, and Tonique Nelson. Fell Hermit Fairy, Diana Galvin, Tracina. Just Mags, Tawny, we are at 1460 at 2K on the Tater and Love. We're getting there. Leslie, thanks for the B-Day wishes. Greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate that. Danny Denae reads yours this Saturday. Happy gosh, second birthday to you. Uh, Vinka, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. Oh, yeah, we have a likes goal, too. We're at 30% right now. I have my screen. We got a long way to go. Oh, we, got, we got a long way to go. If you have one of those, um, one of those uh, massage machines that has the the end that like use it to, to tap your screen to get extra likes in. I, I'm getting looks from Tony and, and Candy right now. They're like, where are you going with this? Where where are you going? The massage, but you know, the percussion massagers. Yes, thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. I understand that that could have gone a, a, a real weird 
direction. I understand, but it wasn't. It wasn't. A massage machine. Yes. Percussion massager. Loki, there are apps, developer girl? Huh. Yeah, Laura, how about those Chiefs? We're still riding the high here. It's amazing. It's crazy. Tony, Tony Spark and I actually talked about it this morning. He's like, did it feel different this time, though? This Super Bowl versus others? Because, you know, Sunday it was like, at this point, it was almost just another game. I mean, yeah, it's a big deal. And the buildup to it is like, yes, it's a bigger deal. Yeah, maybe, maybe like in, in the end, yes, but build up to the game was was different. I love that we're the villains right now. I love it. I want them to come out in all black uniforms next year. I want that to happen. It would be amazing. Alan, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. February babies are the best. Spanky Leonard, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate that. Anise Moon, Rebecca, Ito Toby, Rebecca KSWS, Crystal B, Heather Lakin Dalton, Chef Tila Smith, Heather, uh, Christy Leslie, thanks so much. Oh, my document's moving. What's happening? My document's moving around. Uh, Tony Candy, whatever I was looking at on the document just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Oh, uh, okay. I'm jumping up to story four now. Correct? Okay, here we go. All right, we're at 1540 at 2K on the Taters in Love right now. That is to unlock a spicy reward story and candy feedback. Was this the story you were talking about earlier that Caden Thunder found? That's like a, a bonkers one that everybody's going to get see red about. Is that the spicy reward story that we're unlocking here? That's the second spice. We have another spicy reward story to unlock after this one. This one's, uh, this one's uh, that person. Oh. Oh, dang. Okay. Here we go. We interrupt this uh, this broadcast to take a bite of dirt cake. Mm. It's very creamy. Look at me weird when I say that. Did you get your foul mind out of the cutter, Mr. Spock? All right, this story is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for telling my girlfriend I didn't think she was the type of girl who would want me to buy her stuff for Valentine's? That's just what every girl wants to hear. I, I just didn't think you were the type of girl who wanted stuff on Valentine's Day, you know? You don't, you don't want stuff. We've already handled your stuff. My 29 male girlfriend, 25 female, and I have been together since March of last year, so almost a year. She's not super materialistic and not really into going to fancy restaurants or spending money on designer clothes and such. I often cook dinner for her and go out of my way to make her feel special and loved. However, the other day she brought up Valentine's Day and asked me if I have anything planned. I've never been one to celebrate Valentine's Day. I don't think I need to spend money just to prove I love my girlfriend. I told her this, and I thought she would agree with me, but she said that she would like it if I got her a gift and if we went out to a nice restaurant. I'm working on paying off student loans, and she knows I don't have very much money to spend on gifts and fancy dinners. She is an artistic, sort of quirky girl, and honestly, I did not think she was the type who would want me to shell out the big bucks and take her to some overpriced, crowded steakhouse for a manufactured holiday. It really made me view her differently. I told her, I'm surprised. I really didn't think you were that kind of girl. She went quiet after I said that, and then later accused me of judging her for wanting to celebrate Valentine's. We haven't brought it up again, but I feel that she is still a bit upset about it. Am I the astronaut? Ah. Uh. <sighs> Ellen, good point. Aren't most holidays manufactured? Good point. I think there was an assumption made on his part, and, and you know, what to say about Assumptions, right? Assholes make them. Is that what they say? I'm just kidding. Never mind. Trying to talk to the kids in the back of the class who aren't paying attention the whole class. That's what's going on here. They have no idea what's going on the entire stream. No idea. Every time I say something to them, like, what? What's that? Because it was a swing and miss. What's that? Cool. Okay. All right, guys. I was kidding. <laughs> it was a joke. It was, it was a joke. Yes, but the but the 10 times previously in this stream where I've looked to you guys and said something, it was, yeah, it's complete surprise during the headlights looks. 
<laughs> okay. It wasn't about dirty jokes. Never mind. Ne- never mind. It, it was it was a joke. I know the ass- the assuming makes an ass out of you and me thing. I was I was trying to twist it. You're both assholes. Yeah, that that makes it all better. (laughs) That makes it all better. (laughs) Uh, He made an assumption here. And because he made an assumption, that's where things went sideways here. If they had openly communicated about this ahead of time, when? Okay, when did they have this conversation? It was last minute, so he doesn't think he has time to plan, and maybe that's where where he got stressed here, and maybe that's why he said what he said. It's because he's stressed and he can't pull it off the way that that he feels like he needs to pull it off. Maybe there's some guilt involved there as well. Uh, but but this whole viewing her differently because she wants to celebrate Valentine's, I don't think that's fair. I don't feel like that is a a fair ding on on her character because once a year she wants to to get gussied up and actually do something that's more coupley, right? Something out of the norm. And maybe that's, maybe that's the difference here is that maybe it's not so much that she wants to get out and do the bougie dinner thing, but maybe she wants to do something different. Maybe she wants to, uh, maybe she wants to change things up just this one day. Maybe that's it. Maybe she would appreciate that, but it's, it's the assumption and the lack of communication here that are, that are troublesome, but this is, it's a, 29 male OP girlfriend is 25. They're still young. They've been together almost a year together since March of last year. So almost a year. So they have not had a a Valentine's together yet. This is the first time they're running into this. So the first time you run into anything as a couple, it's going to require communication ahead of time, or you're going to stumble through it. And then you'll learn for the next time. Treat this as a learning experience and a learning opportunity. OP. This is not a ding on your partner's character here. I, I think judging her, truly judging her because because she wants to get dolled up and go out to dinner. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think it makes her materialistic. I think it's every once in a blue moon. It is nice to do something different. We might get dressed up one day out of the year, Candy Thunder, and it may be for like chamber banquet or something. And maybe, yes, I was still working because I was the MC that night. But still, we got dolled up and we got to do something fun. Like it's the only time I've worn a suit. Right. Uh Cupcake McGee says, okay, but what did OP do for Christmas? Good question, but probably had more time to prepare for Christmas. And that may be where the panic is coming from here. Maybe the panic is leading to guilt and that is leading to him lashing out the way that he is here. I don't, I don't feel like it's, it's fair to judge her for wanting to do that, but also I I don't feel like it's fair to, to have this last minute conversation. I feel like OP in your position here, the safe route would be, would be to say, uh, I screwed up. I'm sorry. We should have communicated about this way ahead of time because I didn't plan. Uh, and I feel like I, I need to plan. So we'll do something. It's going to be a miniature version this year. Next year, I promise we will do something much bigger because now I know it's a big deal. Owning that you screwed something up goes a long, long, long way. Especially with your partner. Owning it and saying, I will fix this and I will make sure it does not happen again. Goes much further than you will ever know. Yeah, make a romantic dinner at home. Make it a big deal. Make it make it uh make it something special. And he said he cooks at home for her a lot. It was posted 2 days ago. Um uh, you got to make it special somehow though. And that's that's where it's kind of dangerous because because he does cook at home for her a lot, so you got to make it special while doing something that's the same. So there's got to be some kind of of differentiator here. Um uh, I do, I don't feel like it's it's fair to judge her for that but I understand that he's kind of freaking out because it's a last minute thing. But now, you know, use this as a learning experience. Don't make the same mistake again. I do think you're an asshole for this. How big of an asshole do we think he is? So the question is, am I the ask not for telling my girlfriend? I didn't think she was the type of girl to want me to buy her stuff for Valentine's. That's not just making the assumption. Whenever she told him what she told him and that she did want to do something, His response is the direct question here. Is he the asshole for his response here? It's at least uh, for sure. I could have done it differently for sure. I should have done it differently. In my opinion, I think this is a definitely should not have done this. You should not have said 
I didn't think you were the kind of girl to want me to buy you stuff on Valentine's Day. What happened when he did that is that he he placed 100% of the blame for his fuck up on her. He's like, oh, you surprised me by being something different than I thought you were. That is his way of repelling all ownership and accountability here for this problem. He repelled it back to her, returned to Cinder, and said, oh, it's because you are, I'm surprised that you are this way. It might even be, I don't think it's evil, because I don't think he realizes what he's doing here. But I, that is him cowardly refusing to accept accountability here. When if you own up to it, communicate about it, and don't screw it up again, that would be the best possible outcome. And you'll still do something. You can still do something. Rhodes says, and as if uh, Valentine's was only for him. Yeah, didn't exist. And you don't have to celebrate. I mean, that's between that's between you as a couple to figure it out. But but uh, own it, communicate and and own up to to what you did. Right. For us, we don't traditionally we don't celebrate Valentine's in the traditional sense. Right. But we always try to do something that is us couple wise around this time of year. My favorite still is uh, when Candy Thunder took me to Big Cedar. It was cold as shit. Crazy cold. We have some great pictures from it, though. Uh, we got away for a couple of days, and I was able to go out in the middle of the night um, on the grounds at Big Cedar and do some astrophotography and got some really cool photos, and we just had we had a really good time. Just getting time away. That's it. Yes, yeah, so we can only afford to go there when it's freezing. That's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And, and now, you know, we're, we're using points to take a free flight down to, to Knoxville. And now and now we're we're going to go hike in the mountains. <laughs> Thrifty vacationers. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're also but we're also Monica and Chandler and uh you know, in, in the honeymoon scene when the other honeymoon couple is right in front of them and they're like, oh, we don't need any of that stuff. And Chandler's like, we need the stuff. <laughs> same thing. Same, same thing. Uh, yeah, he's a two in my book. Definitely should not have done this. It, I think it reflects more on his character than hers. 1741 and 2K on the Tater in Love here. In the meantime, we're going to jump to our next story here. This is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Counseling? Counseling. Yep. Am I the astronaut for canceling our anniversary trip because my husband drowned my terrarium? Was it on purpose? I, 29 female, traveled across the country to visit a company regarding an incredible job offer. I spent two days touring the company to decide if it would be the right fit for me after years of self-employment. After meeting with the company, I visited my sister, 32 female, and her family a few towns over. Hi, Navy Bear. Sorry, we barely got to see each other because of work and distance. So it was wonderful to spend a few days with her, the family and her new baby. I was gone for a total of eight days. When I returned home, I was excited to spend time with my husband, 33 male, and tell him about the trip, my visit with my sister, my impression of the city, etc. We were meant to be celebrating our anniversary and decided to put off the discussion about whether or not I should accept the job, the job offer until after our anniversary getaway. I had I had arranged for us to go on a luxury train ride because he's a big train enthusiast and we were meant to leave for the trip three days after I got home. This is when the problem started. I have a very large closed bioactive terrarium, which I made with my mother 15 years ago. It's one of my favorite things that I have of her before she passed. This terrarium is my pride and joy and has come with me everywhere since we planted it. I all... It was always super healthy and beautiful, and I've only ever had to open it four times to do a little maintenance and watering. My husband knows all of this, which is why I don't understand why he decided to tamper with it in my absence. I didn't notice the night I didn't notice the night I got home because I was exhausted, but the next morning I went to check on the terrarium to find it in a terrible state. The roots were rotting and the plants dying and molding. He told me that the day I left, he poured a few cups of water into the vessel and sealed it again. I was so mad I cried and it turned into a huge ar argument because it's just a plant and all you do is look at it anyway. 
He called me ungrateful and overdramatic, and I should appreciate that he intended to help me and that he didn't ask because he didn't want to bother me on my trip. I ended up canceling our anniversary plans, partly because I was so upset that I didn't want to go, and partly because I wanted to try and salvage the plants and that would require time. He hit the roof when I told him and is now sleeping in a separate room and refusing to speak to me because, according to him, I'm being petty and trying to destroy our marriage. Am I being oversensitive about my plants? My parents are pretty evenly split, or I'm sorry, my friends are pretty evenly split and have pointed out that he was just trying to be thoughtful, however misguided it was. Too long, don't read. Am I the astronaut for canceling our anniversary trip, which my husband was excited for because he accidentally destroyed the terrarium I made with my late mother? Oh, before we get into this, we hit it. We hit the tater in love. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and go through that for a second here. Dr. Sweets leading the board here. AK Mary in the number two spot. Brandley 85. Michelle Heather. Callie Peru. Curves. Overkill Mill. Uh, Tawny M. Candy Thunder, Sue Ann 257, this is fine. Oh, one, Diana 5520, Prep Girl, Fell Hermit Fairy, TLS Journey, Clutch Miles, Chica Flamingo, Adventures with Pam, Joss VP, KSWS, Anne, or NA, 414, Vagena, uh, Heather Lakin Dalto, Mama Silver, uh, Ishami, Dariego, 10th Anniversary, Sheftila, M Lobster, Amber L Hickey, Tanya D, AKA T, Tony Spark, Ash Tay, Juju Girl, I am Jill 21, Mags Mazing, Crystal Stockman, Queenie E 33, Jelly 55, MJ Newcomb, Kimberly P, Emmy K, Gry Goose, Holiday 61186, and Enfordia, or Nadia. Heck yeah. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. We're going to get the next one set up. This one is going to unlock... Um, spicy Reward Story and Confetti. Right, what? Okay, which one am I on here? Okay, okay. This one is going to unlock Confetti and a Tony Spark appearance. There we go. Quit changing things on the document while I'm looking at it, man. You're making it confusing. You trying to screw me up? What's going on? Just kidding. Love tag. What? What? Tony Spark and confetti. Boop. There we go. Tony Spark and confetti for 85 love tags. Love tag. That's a weird name. Hi, Tater. You, you want me to wait to read the story until you get back so you can do the feedback? Okay. Candy Thunder has to go uh, to pick up Ava Thunder from school. So she's going to run and get her. When she gets back, we're going to read the story so she can jump in and give feedback then. So we'll just shuffle around a little bit. Hey, kiddo. Are you going with mama to get Dee Dee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. Okay. Let's jump back to this story real quick. Um, I understand her reaction, but also he was just trying to help. I think he do what? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, okay. Who in chat thinks he was actually trying to help? Candy Thunder seems to think that he was, he was trying to do this on purpose and do it maliciously. Okay. So he was not trying to help. Okay, if he was if he was not trying to help and if he did this maliciously, then it's a completely different deal. If he was honestly trying to help and he just screwed it up because sometimes we do that, uh, then it's a different situation. If he did this trying to destroy it, if it was malicious intent and he was trying to destroy this thing that has all kinds of sentimental value to her, she is absolutely not the astronaut. And why, but why would he do it? What's the motive? What's the motive for trying to destroy something that has sentimental value for her that has been around for 15 years? It's just an eyesore. He doesn't want to deal with it. What motive would he have for trying to destroy it? They were going on the trip anyway. But she's only had to, she's only, okay. 
It doesn't make any sense. That it doesn't make sense that none of this makes sense. So so Miles is saying that that he did this acting out because he didn't get to go on the first trip. She traveled across the country to visit a company regarding an incredible job offer, spent two days touring the company, decide blah, 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 and then visited her sister and her family a few towns over. So the theory here is that he sabotaged this because he wanted to go on that first trip. Yeah, maybe. May, and that would that would fall right in line with him not, in, not getting together the first time. I. The job opportunity, maybe he's just acting out because he doesn't want to go, so he's just destroying random shit. It just that's a terrible way to speak your mind. If you have if he's got an opinion on this that he needs to share, uh, you could do that in other ways rather than destroying something that that is a sentimental thing left from your partner's parent who is now passed. Something that he knows is hugely sentimental. Either way, acting out because he's threatened or because he doesn't want to go or because he's he's mad because she didn't take him on the first trip. If this is acting out, it is a terrible, malicious, idiotic thing to do. That grow up and learn to use your words and talk about your feelings instead of ruining something on purpose because you're ruined more than this terrarium. You ruined more than a terrarium. You ruined your marriage. I mean, it got an anniversary trip canceled. If they get to the bottom of this and she figures out that he did do it on purpose because he's acting out about something, you think that uh, you think that this is the, you think they can turn this around. And now, and now he tells her that her feelings aren't valid. I'm innocent or well, well, I'm not innocent. I have rose tinted glasses when it comes to to people's motivations. So I was like, well, maybe the dude was really. I also don't know jack shit about terrariums, obviously. Like maybe he really was trying to help and he was trying to do something sweet and he fucked it up. Obviously, he screwed it up. But now you've got two people overreacting. If she really did, if he really was trying to help and she busted his balls for that. But he also said that her feelings weren't valued. So you got an everyone sucks here. But if that is if that is not the case. And he did this on purpose to try to sabotage it because he's acting out about some bullshit. Then it is very one sided. Very one sided. And that would put him here. In ASCON one territory, and it would put OP. Squarely into NTA land. That sucks. I don't give a shit what it is. I don't care if it's something that 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 you don't like looking at or you don't want to have to mess with or have in your house or what. I don't care. You knew that it had sentimental value to your wife because of her mother who is now passed. Yes, Melinda, it's very passive aggressive. But just talk. Like, why would you? <laughs> You're gonna ruin our lives by taking this job somewhere else. I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin something too. Goosh. And Nat, good good point there. Once he realized that that the terrarium was turning, that it was not headed in a good direction, why wouldn't he speak up and be like, "Hey, I think I screwed something up." If it was innocent, he probably would have spoken a, a, up ahead of time. Uh, good point. He didn't want to bother her. Yeah. That's the bullshit part. If once he saw that things weren't looking right, that would be the time to speak up. If he had done this innocently in the first place, the fact that he didn't just paints him guilt, just paints his guilt further. Oof. Right. TRS. He, he would have apologized if it was innocent. It was not Sabrina TLS. Thanks so much for the love there. Faye, Tony spark. We are 51%. We're at 51% and we have half an hour to go. Holy cow. We gotta get tippity tappity tapping. We're at sixty one to eighty five on the love tags to get Tony Spark up here right now. Um, uh, ba, ba, ba. That was the story. Was am I the asking off for canceling our anniversary trip because my husband drowned my terrarium? And uh, I thought he was innocent at first, but apparently this was not something that you could do innocently. So, uh, so it was malicious intent. He done did it. 
And now he's uh, got himself in a whole heap of shit. 80% on the live goal right now with a 70 of 85 on the on the love tags. It's watered four times in 15 years and he dumped four cups of water in there. Yeah, he's he's got to be acting out on something. Also, clearly, don't put me in charge of your terrarium. Because I don't know what I'm doing. Juju Girl, Tony Spark, Kaylee, Mary, TLS. Thank you so much. Um, LZ, see you there as well. Aunt Sue, Koyo Rican, Emily, Faye, Juju Girl, Fell Hermit, Fairy, TLS. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Rambo Bright, Sabrina, see you there as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's dive over to our next story. Actually, 79.85, we're going to hit that, and then we can dive straight into the uh, to the Tony appearance here, man. You ready to get up here and talk about some gosh heck and chiefs? Oh, you're going to talk about Piano Man? Oh, I am? Oh, okay. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, this is what it looks like. This is the book I wrote. That started off as a story to fall asleep to for our YouTube playlist and is now in book form. Um, also, you can find the full three and a half hour video on YouTube or um, the audio on Spotify, but it is available as an, an ebook, paperback and hardcover. Now, I still don't have my hardcover copy, so be warned if you want a hardcover, they take forever to print and ship. Apparently, we're still waiting on ours. Um, but yeah, there I am. There I am right there. Right that. And we have these available in the TikTok shop, uh, which I will in the TikTok shop. They're available as a signed copy. So if you want one of the signed copies, they're available there. There are a lot of coupons floating out there that TikTok has generated where you can actually get it a little bit cheaper. So you might check out one of those. Um, otherwise, if you don't care about it being signed, you can get it through Amazon. You can check Linktree link in my bio and get quick access to the ebook paperback and hardcover. But there it is. Piano Man. I'll read the. Uh, or read the the back. We'll do signed hardbacks once we get those in as well. If you already have a hardcover or if you order one yourself and want to send it to me to sign and send back to you, just send a return label to me and I'd be happy to sign it and send it back to you. Uh, here is here is the uh, summary on the back here. Dreams are curious things. They have the power to inspire, to manipulate, and to kill. Set in 1910 Germany, Adolf is a piano builder who hasn't spoken since he was a boy. His dreams compel him to build a mystical piano that will help him speak again. His mother appears in his dreams to guide him, but there's a cost on this journey. Meanwhile, the piano is unlike any that Mr. Becker, factory manager at Steinberg Pianos, has ever seen. He believes that it will change the entire piano industry. And while that may be the key to everything that both Mr. Becker and Adolf want, it's also an unwitting weapon of darkness. Will Adolf find a way to derail the dark plans that have been set in motion? It is a mystery thriller. Yes. Heck yeah. Um, I challenged Kieran, one of our one of our teen girls. She was reading a different book. And I'm like, hey, read the first three pages. And if you can't put it down, keep going. If you can, put it down. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I just want to test this and see what happens. The next thing I know, she's like 30 pages deep in it. So that's a good sign. That's a very good sign. We hit the love tags. Let's talk about that for a second. Brandla 85 leading the board here. Michelle Heather in the number two spot. TLS Journey tied. We have a three-way tie for the number two spot, basically. Michelle Heather, TLS Journey, and Callie Prue tied all with 990 there. Heck yes. Adventures with Pam, AK Mary, Curve 611, Amber L. Hickey, Tony Spark, Sue Ann, Juju Girl, Fell Hermit Fairy, Prep Girl, The Real RP, and 414. Miles coming in clutch here again. There's a lot of confetti. Oh no, there's confetti in my in my Dutch keg. This makes me incredibly sad. I will eat paper. I will do it. Oh look, she even gave me another plate so I could protect it, and I just didn't realize it was there. Oh man. Oh man, and 414, Tanya D, aka T, Kimberly Clevenger, Miss Pamela L, Don Banks, Jelly 55, Annie Butcher, Vagina, Pandora's Diamond, M Lobster, Carissa Freeman, and Cosmo Unicorn God. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. <sighs> oh, you better believe I'm picking that paper off and I'm still eating it. It's happening. No dirt cake left behind. <sighs> when I say no troll left behind. I mean no troll left behind. Okay. The new goal here is going to be a spicy reward story and confetti. And it was going to be... This is the spicy... The spicy dicey one? 
Wow. Tony, Tony speaks highly of this, the one that this is going to unlock. If I could spell, this would be easier. Spice reward story and confetti. Okay, we have 3K finger hearts. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen Tony, Tony Spice Oh, hey, uh, thanks, Michelle Heather, for the here we go. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Has everybody recovered from if you, uh, if you're a football person or a Swifty, everybody recovered from the weekend? As you can tell, my voice is not quite recovered <clears throat> yet from the game, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, what a game. I'm in a lot better condition today than I am was yesterday. Uh, Ted made a full comeback after a long, after a dry January. Ted made a quite a comeback on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's just yeah. I don't know about that. So yeah, Ted uh, Ted made quite a comeback on Sunday. I made him a graphic that says Ted's wet February. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Somehow my voice is worse today than it was yesterday. I felt like my voice was normal yesterday, and now it's just like caught up to me. Of there was a lot of yelling. It was that yelling, you know, when you like yell and then you have to you get a headache because you're yelling and you have to take throat yelling. Yeah, I think like mid third quarter I took a couple of Advil and then I took had to take some right after the game too. Somebody was asking if you uh, cheered more for the game or for the Taylor appearances. Uh, I'll be honest on, on game day, I was pretty into the game. So I'm, I'm glad Taylor was there. We were excited when they did show her, but I was a hundred percent. I was locked in. I was focused. It was, I was Mr. Positivity at our house. I was, I was the power of positive vibes. There was no, Sounds like candy's up. no negative. Yeah, there was no negative. It was all positive. We're going to do this. We got this. And, uh, yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was like the pinnacle. I feel like of if you're, for those of you who are not Chiefs fans, watching a Chiefs game is one of the biggest roller coaster of emotions and stress that is just nonstop. Because no matter what, even if we are better than the team the team we're playing in any way, shape, or form, like it will be a close game and it will be a nail biter and it will be too close. I feel like Sunday was just like the peak, like the peak of that stress and anxiety at the end of the game. But it was awesome. The, the pure joy and elation at the end was amazing. And they won again. So, and, and Taylor Swift was there. She looked like she had a great time at the club afterwards. <laughs> Bring your parents, they said. Where are my eyes today? I don't know. I'd know where they were yesterday. Closed, from felt like, for most of it. It was not, uh, yeah. Thoughts on Trent? His passion, man. He's passionate. Um, those guys love each other. Andy loves Travis. Travis loves Andy. It's just he the moment. He's fired up, man. He's like, let's go. He's like, let's let's do this thing. Let's win it. So I don't I don't think it's uh I think it's a context thing in a you know, the media doesn't ever like to make something out of something else. So, you know, they've never done that before. So have you seen uh there's have you, that episode of New Girl where they have like what is his name Tad McTavish or something like that? He's a, oh yeah, he's a I think he's a tight end, right? Um, for San Francisco, probably. What well, he's an actor, but in there, like he falls in love with uh, with Zoe Deschanel really, really fast, and uh, and Winston's trying to explain it. He's like, these are professional athletes. They don't run; they sprint. Yeah. They don't jump. They fly. They don't like. They love. They do everything so more intensely. Uh, and I, I think that that you see a lot of that with Travis there, too. It's like the emotions and the passion that they feel, especially during those games, just gets them like crazy. crazy well, and I think you've seen I mean, we've seen Travis 
And and we've seen Andy in the past. He'll get in the face of his players and yeah. push them around and bump in like, let's go, let's go. Like he'll get them fired up, calm down. So I think you know, look, that's what you want to see. If you're if you're down and you're losing, do you want to just see your team just being like sitting there like, okay, or do you want to see him fired up and you want to see him like, let's go, we can do this, and that's what it was. Somebody was asking uh, what you think about San Francisco not knowing about the OT rules. It's unfortunate for them. Um, I think that's a testament to to Andy Reid because those guys came out and said the players were like, we practiced that from day one in the playoffs, that they practiced during, uh, you know, they practiced those overtime rules all through the playoffs. Every practice they were, they were on the guy, they were learning the rules and they were, they were, they played out all the scenarios. That's why they said, even if they won the toss, they were going to take it. They were going to take the ball second. Like they didn't want it. They knew exactly what they were doing. So it's preparation yeah. being prepared. That's why Andy's uh, one of the greatest of all time. And if I was those guys, I may not have admitted publicly that I didn't know the rules of the right. game I was playing. I mean, yeah. I don't, you're, you're, it's your, it's your profession. It's your, it's your job. You should probably know the rules, Oof. but all right, hold it. yeah. All right. Bye guys. Thank you, Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Spark. Many rounds of applause for Tony. You know, I, I think it's um I think it probably depends on on the kind of relationship you have, right? Um as a general rule, yeah, probably not a great idea to get in the face of your coach. Um because of the relationship that they have, I think it's it's different. Um and yeah, he probably regrets doing it now, but but Coach Reed also uh handled business with him, right? So they They've got their own thing. They're they're okay. I don't think it's in any indication of his character being being dinged in general. Um, just passionate, passionate dudes, right? Passionate dudes. Also, uh, I uh, Travis is is a he's like he's a kid. He's a kid in a full grown ass man's body. Uh, so I mean, there's also this this kid element to it too. But yeah, you know, yeah. You know, whenever we saw that happen too, we're like, we're like, ooh, ooh, and yeah, learning more about it afterwards and hearing Andy say, yeah, it's fine, and and hearing Travis be like, oh, I was just telling him how much I loved him. Obviously, it's not the case, but but hearing well, them think, talk about it, I is, think in the end, um, Andy's okay and Travis is okay, yeah, and they're okay with each other, and I don't think it should, you know, if they're okay, the rest of us think it's everybody else think. should be okay too. If Andy's yeah. fine and everybody's fine, it's all good. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dive into our next story here. We're at 452 of 3K on the finger hearts right now, waiting on Candy Thunder to get back so we can read our spicy story. But in the meantime, we're going to read this one from the AITAH subreddit. While we're at 63% of our likes goal right now, and by the way, if you weren't here earlier when I talked about it, new swag, new design out in the swag shop, just the thunder, tone on tone. It's really stinking cool. I got it a few different ways. We actually got navy, a yellow on yellow with the kind of felt print too. Uh, big fan. All right. This one is titled, am I the asking for choosing my hair over my friend? I 26 female decided not to attend my friends. 25 female. Let's call her Maria wedding. That will be happening later this year. A little bit of backstory about me. I grew up with strict parents, especially my mother. I was not allowed to wear inappropriate outfits, ergo shorts, skirts, anything revealing, have a boyfriend, no wearing of makeup and no long hair. I was actually nicknamed Dora at school because of my bangs and bob haircut. I always envied the other girls who could dress up, wear makeup, style their hair, and feel pretty. So as soon as I was independent, I did the things I was not allowed to do before. I bought clothes that made me feel pretty, experimented with skincare and makeup, and grew my hair out. But anyway, right now my hair is really long, almost reaching my butt, and I constantly take good care of it so it's quite soft and shiny. I take vitamins, adjust my diet, and buy a lot of product to take care of it. It makes me feel good about myself, and I get to style my hair with different braids like I always wanted. Maria was a friend I met during college, and we've gotten closer over the years. She always tells me she loves my hair, and we exchange hair care and skin care tips. We also sometimes go to salons together and get pampered. She's a very close friend of mine, so when she asked me to come to her wedding as a bridesmaid, I instantly said yes. However, a few days ago, she pulled me aside and asked me if I could cut my hair for her wedding. She said that she didn't want my hair to steal people's attention away from her during the wedding. 
Why would my hair steal any attention away from her? This confuses me because she's the bride. I told her that I told her that and she pointed out that I love to style my hair with unique braids and it can catch attention because people will ask how I did it or how I or how I took care of my hair. I did feel guilty hearing this because at the time I realized that I do talk about my hair and hair tips a lot because I felt like I was compensating for the years when I couldn't. Anyway, I apologized to her about the constant hair talk and I promised not to do any of that at her wedding, but I still didn't want to cut my hair. I suggested that I could put it into a simple bun instead. That way it won't steal anyone's attention. I still don't get how it could. She said, no, she wants me to cut it. She gave me an ultimatum that I could either cut my hair or choose not to attend her wedding. Oh, not just be in it now, not go. I chose not to attend the wedding. Most of our friends call me the asshole for choosing my hair over my friend, saying that hair will just grow grow back, but my friendship with Maria never will. But I really tried to compromise. I thought a bun would suffice. I didn't want to cut my hair, and Maria demanding that I do it just reminds me of the days when I was with my parents and my mom cutting my hair while I cried. But... Am I the astronaut for choosing hair over a friend? I am. Am I making a big deal out of nothing? No. No, no. You are not the astronaut for choosing your hair over a friend, uh, but you didn't. You chose your hair over someone who pretended to be your friend and ultimately decided not to. This was not a friend. This was an easy choice. Someone who demands that you change something about yourself is not a friend pretty easy to spot someone who feels so threatened by you. They force you to change yourself just to be in, not just in to be at your wedding, her wedding. Words are hard. Dear, dear, dear Lord, someone who forces you to change yourself just to be at your, her wedding. Damn it. I did it again. Got all the way to the end. Not a friend. She's absolutely not a friend, and that sucks. I'm sure that's that's gut wrenching. That's heartbreaking because you you've grown closer over the years, and you were excited to go to this wedding, but then oh, anything that might steal a little bit of glimmer of the shot of the spotlight, right? She couldn't have it. Couldn't handle it at all. This speaks to her insecurities, OP, and that sucks. It absolutely sucks. You did try to compromise. It's crazy that she it's crazy to me that she wasn't just saying you can choose not to be in the wedding. No, she said at like you cannot. If you aren't going to do this, you just can't even be there. You can't come to my wedding, period. Like, well, that's that's drastic. That is drastic. Maria. Yeah, absolutely. Maria goes to here all the way to ask on one for trying to force her friend to do this and giving her the ultimatum and not in, not even letting her attend the wedding because she didn't want to cut her freaking hair. I'm sure that hair. Would have been, you know, the amount of time that hair has been growing has probably been growing longer than they've been friends. And the update. Okay, here we go. That's a good thing you said something. I knew there was an update. I just didn't didn't see it right there. We have an update. Update. Thank you to everyone who commented on the last post. It made me feel validated with my decision and made me feel less horrible. I also appreciated the kind words and advice given. Now on to the update. I initially planned to give it two to three days before I contact Maria again, and I was hoping for a few days of silence would help help her cool off and for me to build up the courage to speak to her again. But I got too anxious, so I ended up pushing it and pushing it further until I finally decided to call her yesterday. She didn't pick up my calls at first, so I had assumed that she was either busy or she didn't want to talk to me anymore. I made a few more calls because I really wanted to mend our friendship, but then I started to realize that I may come off as annoying and unable to take a hint, so I dropped it. A few hours later, I finally got a text from Maria asking me if I'm free to talk. I got nervous. Confrontations are kind of all confrontations of any kind to make me feel anxious. But I said yes. Our conversation went as follows. I discovered that the wedding was canceled and that Maria decided to end the engagement. She also told me that she appreciates me as a friend, but no longer wants to talk with me and our friend group again. What the what? I asked her why, and she admitted that the reason she pushed for a wedding was because she caught her now ex-fiance cheating last December. Oh, well, that, you know, push for pushing for a wedding. That'll solve it. That'll solve everything. So so they pushed for marriage as that was his way of showing her that she's the only one. Maria loves him and she agreed to this condition. But since then, she has become extremely insecure and paranoid over his interactions with other women. She never told us, though, because Maria felt that talking about it was like her acknowledging the problem. She believes that talking about negativity attracts more negativity, so she often avoids it. 
That's the reason why she loved the guy. Because he was a positive and happy-go-lucky type of person. Her ex-fiance was also the type of guy who loved to compliment others. Maria used to find this endearing, but because of the cheating, it made her paranoid. As such, she admitted that her paranoia led her to ask for me to get a haircut because her ex-fiance once complimented it. Wow. She has also done something similar to our other friends. She ended up losing friendships just like she did with me, and this has made her reflect. But she but she was also hell-bent on her decision to get married, and her wake-up call was catching him cheating on her again with one of our friends this time. This was how she realized that it won't work anymore. The wedding was canceled, and she called to apologize to me, thanking me for being her friend, but after everything, she said she no longer wanted to be in contact with any of us. I still don't understand that part. She said that every time she sees us, she can't help but be reminded of him. In her words, seeing your hair reminds me of how he said he liked it, and it makes me want to hate you. And would rather cut our friendship before she starts to hate us. Before? Think she's there. I am hurt by her decision since a part of me feels that it's unfair for me to lose our friendship because of someone else's actions. But after some reflection, I also realize that friendships are two-way and I cannot force one with her if she doesn't want it. So in the end, I do get to keep my hair, but not my friendship with Maria. It's sad, but at the very least, we had somewhat of a closure. So that's all. Thank you so much for everyone who validated and gave me advice in the last post. I wish this update was a happier one, but I guess it was better than what I expected. I never knew that losing friendship would hurt just as much as losing a boyfriend, so it'll take a good while for me to get over it. I imagine it's worse. I imagine losing a close good friend. I imagine a close good friend is is stings worse than losing a boyfriend or girlfriend because it's I, I feel like you get closer and there's probably more time involved there. I still don't understand how she's cutting off all of her friend group. Because it hurts too much to like every time she talks to them or looks at them, it, she's going to be reminded of of her now ex who screwed her over. Well, guess what, lady? You're going to be able to apply that that strategy or that that filter to everything in life. If you can you can say this reminds me of this bad thing to anything, freaking piece of confetti like wood, air, light. You can tie bad things to anything if you're really trying to. And it sounds like she's really trying to right now. And that's no way to live. There's going to be an anniversary for a bad thing every effing day. There's going to be this reminds me of this bad thing everywhere she looks. People who seek pain will always find it. Always. This is her looking for pain. Yes, she needs therapy. Absolutely needs therapy to get through this. She doesn't need to be cutting out her friend group that actually cares for her. Yeah, the one friend who fooled around on her fiance or fooled around with her fiance. Yes, obviously. But her entire friend group, just guilty by association. And OP because you have long hair that her her idiot of an idiot of an ex complimented once. She can never look at you again. Probably going to have to develop some more emotional toughness. And yeah, that's that's going to be something that requires some therapy. It also is going to be something that requires the support of a friend group. And isolating yourself and siloing yourself is not going to make you happier. If anything, it's going to push you further into darkness. I would think it does not make sense. Elise says, my guess is that's not her main friend group, though. I understand that. Uh, I understand that she's got some some different friend groups, but I think it's completely unfair to do this guilty by association thing. Um, and and because her her ex fiance was a douche canoe who couldn't keep it in his pants, punished this entire friend group for that because he complimented them. And one of them was dumb enough to do something with him. Yes, but. But it just seems it seems like a very weak thing to do, a very weak minded thing to do, to be like, I have to cut you all off because I can't look at you anymore. It just reminds me of him. And honestly, you can she's going to have trouble looking at anything. To the point where she's going to recluse into a hole and not want to look at anything, not want to go outside, not want to go to work, not want to do anything like they, they You can remind yourself of bad things where with anything that you look at. She may think that they all knew and didn't tell her. 
Poppy a day says it's possible. That would suck if that was the case. But man, I, I don't know. I just feel like isolating yourself further is the, the last thing that you need to do when you're facing this kind of darkness. Um, there was a show we were watching the other day. Oh, no. Uh, it was it was a scene from the summer. I feel pretty. Yes. I've watched a little bit of it with Candy Thunder. Um, and it was it was a scene where the guy is, is talking to one of the moms and he says uh, he had lost his wife or something. And uh, he said that the the most helpful people weren't the ones that told him what he needed to be doing, weren't the ones that that uh, that gave him advice. It, it was the people who crawled down into the hole with him and just sat with him. And I think that's one of these kind of things you need. You need a friend group who can who can sit in it with you, if nothing else, to be there with you. Isolating yourself is dangerous. It's just dangerous. What about starting a new clean slate, moving where they don't know anyone? Hope he stays loyal. Yeah, uh, I mean, that may be what she's trying to do here. But again, I mean, I, I've, I've witnessed and encountered people in life that are like, every single freaking day, it's an anniversary of something bad that happened. And it sounds like she's heading in that direction because she can't, she can't look at these people because of something that he said. And legitimately, if you let that infect you and infect the things that you love and appreciate about this world, nothing will be safe. Nothing. Tree Witch says, I know it seems rude to say people need therapy, but I swear by it. I, 100%. I mean, there, there are a lot of the cases that we get into in here where people just absolutely need it. And she does for sure, especially if she's reclusing and, and cutting herself off. Uh, Josie, you're trying to submit a story, but it keeps getting kicked back. Where are you trying to submit that story? That's weird. Yeah, I don't think she's staying with this guy. I think she's done, but she's looking at it like a clean slate for herself. Tiaras, is it rude? I think it shows compassion to suggest people to seek therapy when they're hurting. You know, it's probably about context and and delivery, too. Um, I mean, I'm sure you could say you need therapy in a very rude way and it be rude. Sure. But but in the context of what we're talking about here and and how we bring it up, I don't think it could ever be taken away that way. Yes. Tact. Thank you. It's the one word that sums up everything that I was just trying to say. The link on the link tree, Josie. Oh, um. Well, that should take you to a page on dusty-thunder.com where there is a uh, a form. Let me pull that up real quick. For Miles, are you investigating? Yeah. Okay. Miles is investigating. It's working okay for him. If you on there say, uh, bah, submit a story, that should put up another page. And that other page is at dusty-thunder.com, which, uh, which has a form. And you'll have to fill out your email, the subject, and your story there. And then make sure you do the recaptcha and then hit submit and it should work. Miles, do you mind doing a test submission on that real quick just to make sure there's nothing wrong with that form? Okay. We're going to test it real quick and see what happens. Okay. We are at 1410 of 3K on the finger hearts right now to get the spicy, spicy story. Candy Thunder just walked back in. Hey, tighter. The one we're trying to unlock right now. We also have the spicy story to read because Candy Thunder just showed back up. And what timing you have? We just finished one up. Perfect timing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pull that one up. And then maybe we'll be ready for the second spicy reward story after this one. What's up? Did I do something? Oh, what did my spawn do? Being a Sour Patch Kid? Oh, well, yeah, of course. Karen, thanks so much. Uh, Renee, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, heck yeah. Yours was yesterday and your daughter's is tomorrow. Mine was Saturday. We're officially celebrating today, but yeah. Uh, yeah, Candace, uh, Candace says you can do the the Dusty Thunder subreddit. That is probably the best way to go anyway, because there's there's a a statistically small chance that it's going to get picked up to actually read during a video or during a live stream. But if you do it on the dusty thunder subreddit, uh, that will get you the quickest feedback and it will definitely get eyeballs on it. 
Iron Frost, thank you so much. Jacques, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Um, and Tiaris, yours is today. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Happy gosh heckin' birthday to y'all. Lil Red, Tanya Needle, Michelle Heather, Katie, Robin Amelia, Tanya Needle, Adventures with Pam K, Katie, MJ Newcomb, Kara, TLS, Lauren B, User55, lots of numbers, Amber L. Hickey, um, Carmen Dannon, Jill, Amanda, Kimberly P. Fell, Hermit Fairy, Kristen, Museum Girl, Janice2014, Nicole Smith, Anise Moon, Fell, Hermit Fairy again there, The Effulgent One, Katie5039, Robin Amelia again, The Effulgent One, Michelle Heather, uh, Camille Holt, Kara, Ms. Pamela L, Lil Red, Lauren B, Amanda Durham, Candace, uh, Candace with an I, A, Kez, Mama Jan, Anise Moon, Faye, Merry Happy Dragons. Thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate the love. And we're going to go ahead and dive into this spicy reward story. This is the one you're giving feedback on. Um, Candy Thunder, are you okay for me to go ahead and start? Okay, here we go. Title of this story is, Am I the Astronaut for Kicking My Wife Out After She Punched My Mom in the Face? What? And this isn't the super spicy one. My situation went from bad to worse in a matter of a week, and I don't know where else to turn. I need to know if I was wrong. Possibly a validation thing, because life is effing dumb right now. My wife and I have been together for eight years, and she just gave birth to our first and last baby two months ago. Up until my wife got pregnant, my mom loved her. I'm not sure W2 it. WTF. That's a hard thing to say. I'm not sure WTF is wrong with my mom or why the switch happened. But after my wife got pregnant, my mom started being very clingy to me and started avoiding my wife at all costs. Told everyone she wasn't excited about the pregnancy, etc. I threatened to go no contact with her when 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 my wife was about seven months along. And after that, she snapped out of it for the most part and stopped being so ignorant. The comments 100 percent stopped, at least though she still was clinging to me. Now, a week ago, my mom, my sister, my sister's husband, and my sister's daughter, 12, came over for dinner. I prepared the meal. Before my wife could eat anything, our daughter got fussy, so my wife excused herself to go feed the baby and get her down to sleep. I thought I prepared every... I thought I... Pre- Words are hard. I thought I prepared enough, but apparently not because my niece was still starving. She's 5'5 and 190 pounds. I haven't seen her in a year, and she was not that size then, so I didn't exactly portion in an extra three helpings for a child, so it's on me. I apologized and told her that I hadn't made any more and offered her crackers as I was putting my wife's portion in the fridge. After that, I just went outside with my sister's husband to smoke a cigarette and shoot the breeze. Didn't think anything of it. But then I hear yelling from inside. When I walked in, my wife and my mom were screaming at each other. Apparently, my mom, who saw me put my wife's food away, gave my niece my wife's portion of food. As I was walking inside, I heard my mom say, Looks like you can afford to skip a meal, and slapped my wife's stomach. Right as soon as I get ready to step in, literally fast walking toward them, yelling, Enough! My wife winds back and punches her mother square in the face and drops her. My mother, sorry. My wife winds back and punches my mother square in the face and drops her. The whole house went silent outside of my mom crying and holding her face. I told everyone to get the fuck out. Immediately, everyone leaves and my wife just turns toward the counter and leans with her hands on the counter and face down, eyes closed. I look at my wife and say, you two leave now. She says, really? She's crying at this point. I, I say a clipped, yep. She packs, her, she packs up her and the baby and they leave. I texted her that night and said, I just need space. I need to decompress and come to terms with what just happened. She doesn't respond. The next five days, I'm texting and calling and I get nothing. She shows up here today, so eight days later, and hands me divorce paperwork and my baby and says, here, you have a bit to hang out with her while I go pack. When I'm done breast when I'm done breastfeeding, we can work out a visitation schedule that is either at your place or my mother's until she will take a bottle. I told her that's not what I want. I don't want to separate. I just needed time to process her punching my mother in the face. She said, "You needing time to process gave me time to process the fact that I refused to be in this situation any longer. I defended myself. I initially felt bad and remorseful, but you making me leave when I needed you made me see more clearly. I'm done." I'm sorry for what I did, but there's no fixing this. She refused to speak to me at all the rest of the time that she was here. My house feels so empty and I don't know what to do. Am I the astronaut for making her leave after she punched my mom? I just needed some effing space. 
And to add for the record, I am team wife. My mom deserved it wholeheartedly, and I've blocked her completely from my life. I literally just needed time to process what happened. My wife is a lot of things. Violent is not one of them. So this came completely out of left field and would not have happened without her being provoked. After it all happened, my mom sent me a text saying, See, I told you she was crazy. That fat bitch doesn't belong in our life. I'm willing to bet she purposely tried setting my wife off. So no, I'm not on my wife's side 100%. I truly just needed to process what happened, and my wife took it as me giving up on her, not defending her and throwing her and our baby out, which did essentially happen because I knew she had to take the baby with her when I kicked her out. And it is to add to the reason why. My dad was physical with me and my siblings growing up. Mom was put in the hospital multiple times. It took years for police to enforce restraining orders, and he finally died in 2013. Violence scares the effing shit out of me. I clam up and get anxious around the around violence of any kind now. My wife knows this, and she too grew up with a violent dad, stepdad, and she gets just as anxious and panicky around violence. Her punching my mom in the face triggered an anxious response, and I needed her gone at that moment. I needed it far away from me. I don't know why I didn't just leave. I could have. But in that moment, I just let my emotions and fear run the whole fucking circus and told everyone to get out, her included. My mom slapped her first. I guess for some reason I was seeing my wife's punch as being worse than the slap. It wasn't a hard slap, but my wife did kind of wince. Looking back at it now, she was fine, but my mom was bleeding. Split her eyebrow open in good shape. I don't know. Thanks for the responses. I'm the asshole. I'm going to try to go kiss ass now. Ladies and gentlemen, to help give us some feedback on the story, the one, the only, the Candy Thunder. Peppered beef jerky. The real tater in love here. Uh, you, you have peppered beef jerky yeah, in your mouth? Like a, no, I did before I got here. Um, what is, it, you, is it the what kind of you, pepper jerky that like the kernels of pepper get stuck in mm-hmm. your teeth and then they pop and you're like, ooh, that's spicy. Mm-hmm, yep, exactly. I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> don't bring a slap to a fight. That's, that's, that's it, good. Yep. Um, pew, pew, pew. Fine. Yeah. So I think his whole, I need to kiss ass and do all this stuff, um, is completely negated by the fact that he said he's possibly on Reddit for validation mm. for doing what he did. He came to get validated for kicking his wife and his two month old baby out of his house. How do you, and then, and then to say like, oh yeah, I did fuck up. I realized I messed up, blah, 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 blah. But you came originally for possibly validating what you did to your wife. And I assume that's your wife's house too and your baby's house too. And you knew if you kicked your wife out, you were kicking your baby out. You abandoned yeah, them. he did. When she's in the middle of postpartum, the worst part of postpartum in my two times pregnant opinion um, is that two month mark because people come around less. You're more like the baby starting to be awake more like sleep gets all messed up again. It's that's two month mark is a hard freaking part. And your your mom set you up and you just took the bait. Like she set this whole thing up. She knew exactly what she was doing and you just walked right into it and gave her what she wanted. And then you didn't choose your wife. Like I can't, I can't even, I mean, I would hand him divorce, divorce papers too. There's no question about it. He didn't, he didn't choose his mother. He chose himself. Like like just, it wasn't a choice. He sent yeah. everybody away. But but yes, mom absolutely played this. Yes. Knowing what trauma he has, mm-hmm. knowing that she was going to take advantage of it, knowing exactly what she was doing. And in that moment when your wife needed you to step up and choose her more than any other time before, you chose yourself. He could have walked away, though. Like, you don't kick yeah. your wife and your baby out of a ha- out of your home. When you can very easily walk outside, take a drive, go get your space that you need, you do not abandon your wife and baby. He wasn't even directly affected in this. He was a bystander, right? Like she was the one that got into this altercation and got got baited into this by mom. She was told that she was fat, that she didn't need to eat, and then she was slapped. So yeah, of course she's going to respond in that situation. And instead of like seeing that that could have happened, you didn't take even a breath. You just kicked her out and was like, I can't look at you. I can't see this. I mean, you, you did the one thing that you promised not to do when you married your wife and that, that I don't think you can get that back. I don't think you can kiss ass and make up for what you've done. No. Yeah. Yeah. And Tony said the mom's response 
saying that. I mean, she just basically told you she she baited you and you fell for it. You can't slap people and tell them they're disgusting and not expect them to respond. That's just that's just crazy behavior. And they both came from they both came from upbringings where they had violent people around. So it's not just a him thing. I mean, it's something that they have in common. Mm-hmm. And you know whether you have whether you have PTSD from it or not, you don't repel your family. Like if anything, at this point, he needed to step up mm. and protect them, and did the opposite, sent everyone away to protect himself, not physically, right. mentally, emotionally. But his wife had just been through something, a physical altercation, mm-hmm. and and he sent her away. In like the most heated time, like that's that's not the time. It's time to circle right. the wagons. It's time to make sure that she knows that she's safe. This is her space too, and instead, just sent her away. You in that moment could have went up to your wife, hugged her, consoled her, told her how much you loved her, and turned around like the situations where you were in, where you were abused and you knew violence. Like you could have saved your wife in that moment because you saw her get slapped, but instead you just treated her like dirt. Like you treated her like she was nothing. Like only your mental yeah. health mattered. Not the woman who just, who just gave, just gave birth, had a baby. I mean, what if she had a C-section? Like, we don't know that, but you don't slap a woman who just gave birth in the stomach. Like, come on. <laughs> Joyful stranger, BRB texting my boyfriend, honey, if your mom ever slaps me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, where would you put OP at here, Candy Thunder? I'll let you do the honors. There it goes. Okay. We we did talk about this. Too. No question. Uh, when we have Ask on Ones, I think we're gonna start doing something like this. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get this etched like an Ask on One etched on here, and this will be the Ask on One Award. There we go. <laughs> the uh, we'll call it the Assy the Assy Award, something like that. Uh, yeah. The Assy. The Assy. It's definitely not cool. No. It's really sad. It's a very sad story. Yeah, it I really think, is. And they unlocked the next. Yeah, which we got to do, story. right? We've got. So, yeah, I know we're over right now. We're over on time right now, but we got to do it. We got to read that last spicy story. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. We'll rock and roll. Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, Thank guys. you so much, Tater. Mwah. Seems like uh, I don't. I don't hear Navy Thunder screaming. She must be must be decently happy for the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Hodor. All right, we got there on the finger cross. Let's go ahead and talk about this for a moment. Give some thanks, and we'll start the story. Callie Fru leading the board here by a long shot. Nice work. Michelle Heather, TLS Journey, the Mr. Beaumont, Amy Sparks. Good name. Taylor Dactyl, this is fine. Prep Girl, Cakey323, Adventures with Pam, Redder Duck, Sue Ann257, Ishami. Tanya Needle, MJ Newcomb, Amber L. Hickey, Juju Girl, Overkill Mill. And we also have Nixie, oh, Jim, AK Mary, I am Jill21, Anise Moon, Fell Hermit Fairy, Kathisi, Cosmos, 9301, 1959, Karen, Scary T Rose, I'm sorry, Scary T Rose, Scarlet Rose, words are hard. Amanda Mills, Gabarino, uh, Rhonda Yannick, Tanya D, aka T, Tony Spark, 10th anniversary of Shannon Aaron, Jelly55, M Lobster, Beyond Beautiful, hey lady, good to see you, Fame 13, Ms. Pamela L, Mandala Will, uh, Carmen Danen, yep, it's Kara, Kit Loves Books, SMS 1977, Michelle Super Grandma, Mary Happy Dragons, Dragons Sapphires 96, Mandy Flores and Coco R.A. There you go. Thanks thanks for the the clutch save there, brother. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you all so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. We're going to get into our spicy story. I'm going to go ahead and set this next one up, uh, but we'll carry it into VIP. VIP is going to get started after this next story we go to. um, To unlock the first story for next week. Yeah. 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 this one is going to be. Sorry, I'm lost. Lost. And this will be a cake story for next week. Boop. Okay, here we go. 
me get a chug of water in here. We are at 93% on the likes goal, too. You guys are over 900K on likes right now. We're in bonus round. We're in overtime. Hey. Here we go. This is uh, this is supposed to be the spicy, spicy, right? Okay. Uh, spicy reward story here. Trigger warning. Miscarriage. Am I the astronaut for wanting to postpone the wedding with my fiance because she tested me with a fake miscarriage? I, 26 male, have been dating my fiance Vivian, 28 female, for five years, and we found out she was pregnant shortly after I proposed. We were both ecstatic about it, even though it wasn't planned. Vivian's parents were a bit upset that I got their daughter pregnant without being married to her, but having a wedding during her pregnancy seemed to calm them. They're religious, so this is why they were upset. She's currently 13 weeks pregnant, and four days ago, I got off work, so I immediately headed home to our apartment. I saw her best friend, Carly, 29 female, sitting on the couch looking very upset, which is unlike her, so I asked as I asked if everything was okay and where Vivian was. Carly told me that she was in our main bathroom, so I headed over to it and noticed that Carly was following me, which I think was a little strange, but brushed it off. I knocked on the door and asked if I could come in, which Vivian said yes to. So I opened the door and saw my fiance standing over the toilet with tears in her eyes when she looked at me. I immediately asked her what was wrong and Vivian sniffled and told me that she miscarried, gesturing for me to look inside the toilet. I averted my eyes to it after I saw it and then started crying. I was genuinely sobbing, which I haven't done since Vivian revealed that she was pregnant, but those were tears of joy. I grabbed my fiance and hugged her tight while crying into her shoulder. Eventually, I, I, eventually I looked up and saw in the bathroom mirror that Carly was standing in the door with Dory. <clears throat> eventually, I looked up and saw in the bathroom mirror that Carly was standing in the doorway with her phone out like she was recording something or taking pictures. I let go of Vivian and asked Carly what the hell she was doing. Carly stammered and was going, uh while looking for an excuse. Eventually, my fiance fessed up and admitted that she didn't actually have a miscarriage and that it was a test to see how I would react if she actually lost our baby. What the fuck? I essentially short-circuited, unable to comprehend how the hell Vivian and Carly, despite us not being as close could do something so outlandishly cruel to me. I snapped out of it when Vivian attempted to touch my cheek and pushed her hands away. I didn't want to be near her or have her touch me at that moment. Carly and Vivian tried to stop me from leaving the bathroom, but I pushed past them so I could go to our bedroom. I haphazardly packed some clothes into an old bag and headed straight for the door after grabbing my keys. Vivian caught up with me at the door and tried to plead with me to stay and talk about what happened, but I told her I needed time away from her to process what happened. She didn't push for me to stay after that, but seemed disappointed about it. I ended up staying with a buddy of mine, Josh, 26 male, who told me that I could stay as long as I wanted once I told him what happened and commented how, on how fucked up that was for Vivian to do to me. I'll admit I was childish and dodged Vivian's texts and calls, except to let her know I was safe over the next two days. Once I felt stable enough, I invited Vivian to talk. I won't go into everything we talked about, but the reason why Vivian decided to test me was that she was afraid that I didn't actually want the baby and was caring for them because I had to not to be seen as a deadbeat. I said that I understood her fears, but I legitimately wanted to be a father to our baby. I ultimately decided to stay with Vivian, but on the condition that we postponed the wedding until after the baby was born and we did couples counseling. Vivian said okay and left my friend's apartment. I honestly assumed that was it and I was going to go home soon after that. Boy, was I wrong. An hour after Vivian left, I got messages from Carly harassing me about forcing Vivian to have a baby out of wedlock, since I know that's not what her parents want while insulting me. It got so intense that I eventually blocked her. Honestly, I just want some unbiased outsider perspective on this. Am I the astronaut? What? I feel like you, OP, handled this uh, the most level-headed, calm way possible, and postponing the wedding until after the baby so you guys can go through counseling was probably the smartest, most cool-headed thing you could ever do. Um, Carly might be a problem here because there needs to be a conversation with Vivian to say who had this brilliant idea of, of faking a miscarriage and forcing me to look inside of a toilet and, and 
filming my reaction who whose brilliant idea was was this because who was standing in the doorway filming and who was the first person you saw when you got into the apartment sitting on the couch i think i think friend carly here is a manipulator i think friend carly here probably talked vivian into this vivian had to go along with it anyway vivian had to say okay and that's garbage that's terrible for her to do that to you period it's not okay but Carly seems like a problem child here for your relationship. Carly seems like a terrible influence. <laughs> and talk to talk to Vivian's parents and let them know what the hell their daughter just did to you. I think they'll understand you wanting to postpone the wedding and go through some counseling. I think they're going to understand that. And they're going to be very, very upset with Vivian, their daughter, and Carly, her batshit crazy friend, for pulling this shit in the first place. If they had a problem with having a child out of wedlock, how do you gonna how do you think they're gonna feel about faking a baby's death just to see how somebody reacts and filming it? How do you think they're gonna react to that? How do you think they're gonna feel about it? Probably not great. Do you think they're gonna be more mad about that than having a kid out of wedlock? Probably. So Carly, sit the fuck down. If someone ever did this to me, I could. I, it, that's unforgivable. That is an unforgivable cruelty. What? This is the kind of thing you would never wish upon your worst enemy. Why your loved one would do that to you and push you through that to test you is beyond me. There is malicious intent behind this. This is not a real test. If Carly was behind making this thing happen, there is malicious intent behind it. And is it is a seed of her trying to bust up this relationship. This is a seed of contempt. Oh, I, I think, yeah, there needs to be a conversation with Vivian about whose idea this was. Figure out how how. How much of it was actually hers and how much of this was initiated by Carly. Figure out how bad of an influence Carly really is. I think you legitimately need to have a conversation with Vivian's parents here as well and explain everything that's going on to them. Yes, counseling is 100% needed. That's just to give you a chance. Right now, it is a just to have a chance kind of thing. Like, holy crap. Um, And Vivian needs to understand (laughs) that this Carly person is not her friend. She's destroying her life. She has to understand that and create some space. Can the fiance have an adult conversation? I hope. I hope. Roberta says just walk away and get custody of her child. I I mean, I think I in, in, if I were put in that position, I'd be pissed. It's easy for me to stand here and be like, Yes, I talked to Vivian's parents, talked to Vivian, figure out how involved Carly was. I'd be I'd be crushed and I'd be furious. So I don't know. I don't know what I would actually do in that moment. The smart thing I feel like to do would be to have the conversation with the parents and with Vivian to figure out what actually happened here and make sure the parents understand. And then, yes, take it slow. It's going to take time to heal from this. And this this probably is still going to be an unforgivable for eternity. But figuring out who is responsible, I think, will go a long way. It's rough. Ugh. So the question is, am I the ask not for wanting to postpone the wedding with my fiance because she tested me with a fake mis- miscarriage? Hell no. Hell no. That's the that's a, a tame response. That is the minimum. The minimum change in course is postponing and getting counseling. That is a very conservative response here. Tony Spark, you trying to punch in? Yeah, so there he didn't post an update or anything, but he does have a couple of comments on here. Um, so he said, I know she's pregnant. We did go to a doctor together after she brought home a test and confirmed that she was actually pregnant. So we do know that's true. He said he didn't ask Vivian, but he's pretty sure it was Carly's idea. He said Carly was the one who called it a prank when it first happened and not a test, which is why I guess she was recording it. In her text, she was switching between saying just being a, just a test and a stupid prank, which confused the F out of me. So I would I would say it might be safe to assume it was Carly's idea, but that's all the that's all the comments he has. Some people just want to watch the world burn. 
Yeah, there's some social content, Carly. Good gravy. What are you, a content creator on the dark fucking web? What is the deal? That is terrible. That person, Vivian has to understand that this person is not, is not a positive to your life. The whole zero is greater than negative one thing. Carly is a negative. She has a negative influence. She's going to have a negative impact on your life. She's going to drag you down for eternity. You have to separate yourself from her, Vivian. She's already trying to destroy your family. You haven't even had your baby yet. She's trying to destroy your family. Like, what the? Ah, hey, Bree, happy birthday to your son. He's four. Heck yeah. Happy birthday. Um, the, uh, this this is inexcusable. It's terrible. Terrible, terrible. Um, yeah, it's gross. Gross. Yeah, that's, that's effed up. That's for sure. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and pivot over to VIP. Sorry, I'm like, I'm in shell shock from this now. I mean, I'm in shock from this story. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pivot over to the VIP setup. We're going to have a shorter one. It's going to be a 30 minute. We are going to spin the wheel today. So we're going to have some Wheel of Thunder winners. Heck yes. Adventures of the Pam. Yeah, I'm just, I can't imagine ever being in that kind of position. It would be just absolute garbage. Uh, Likes go. Hey, a Millie likes. Look at you all go. Y'all are amazing. A B Day confetti and a Millie likes confetti. You guys are amazing. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for supporting everything that we do. We could not do this without you legitimately. Uh, so much appreciation for you being here, engaging and interacting and, and having fun with us. And for uh, and for toughing it out through the tough stories like that, it's um, it's wild. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you for hanging out with us. VIPs, we'll see you here in a few. And then reminder, no stream tomorrow. Let me get to my outro notes. I'm actually going to read them today. Mary, uh, send it a gift. It's up to Amanda. Welcome to the Gosh Hacking Fam, Amanda. Ms. Murphy, H.A.M. Juju Girl, Skate Ballerina, Adventures with Pam. K. Happy Hippie Kayaker, Amanda Nicole Newman, XX Genuine, Sally, Tabby, Leanne, Nia Soul Star, One Chalk Man, One Stacy, Kimberly P. TLS, Samantha Girus, uh, Yohian Wright Dimple, TLS, McKinsley Jade, Olivia Marie, Vicky Wildridge, welcome to the Gotcha Hacking Fam, Lauren B. McKinsley Jade again, Yvette B01, Candace with an I, uh, Janet Lopez, Adventures with Pancake, Graham Donna Kratz, Sertala, Janet Lopez again there, Grim and the Gosh Hacking Fam, heck yeah, Fallen Angel, Michelle, X5, Erica McGree, Greenwald, welcome to the Gosh Hacking Fam, Aaron, Angela, Lauren B, Mellow, Fellow, Minions Den, Bammy Rose, thank you guys so much, greatly appreciate it, a reminder, next stream will be a multi-stream Sunday, February 18th at 9pm, we'll be on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitch, then the weekly stream will be next Wednesday, the 21st, no stream tomorrow, be sure to subscribe on YouTube if you are not already. We have a lot more videos that post there. You can also find all the podcasts and compilations there as well. Plus, Piano Man is there and more exclusive content. Don't forget, we're doing a 24-hour stream on the 29th starting at 10 a.m. Central Time. Mark your calendars. 24-hour stream February 29th, which is going to be absolutely bonkers. VIP is coming up in 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to spin the Wheel of Thunder during the live and hang out for just a little bit. We'll see you then. Thank you so much for the birthday wishes and having fun with us. Greatly appreciate it. And go Chiefs! Also, check out the new Thunder swag. Big fan. Candy Thunder, we got to get your white sweatshirt with the, the tone on tone for uh, the next stream that we do, too. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs>